Hey there, everybody. Give me just a second here. So, um, during my broadcast yesterday, many of you, and, and I do mean many of you, wanted me to play Baldur's Gate 3 today uh, because it's the launch day. And so I figured I'd go ahead and do an additional surprise Thursday morning live stream for the launch of Baldur's Gate. Now, uh, the way this works is it, it was early access for a very long time. And because it was early access, apparently there's a technical problem that doesn't allow them to preload the game to allow you to preload the game. So I couldn't preload the game. I had to wait. Hold on a second. I'm trying to figure something out here. I had to wait until eight o'clock. Now I tried installing the version of the game that they had available on their, uh, on Steam. And when I, when I launched it, it was um, still the early access version. So I uninstalled the early access version. I waited until eight o'clock Pacific time, which is now. It was just a few minutes ago, and I started uh, installing the game. Uh, but that means we have to wait for it. So I think everybody around the globe is doing that right now. I've been checking out the community hub there on Steam, and everyone else was saying the exact same thing. They had to uninstall the early access version and then wait until 8 o'clock, and then they could download and install the full game, which is what we're all doing right now. So this might take a little bit. I don't know how long it's going to take. It's 97 gigabytes and I've downloaded, I'm just, I just downloaded a gigabyte and a half. So I'm thinking maybe we'll be here for 10 minutes or so while we download and install the finally published full version of Baldur's Gate. So that gives us a chance to read Super Chats and check in with everybody. Uh, for those asking, I do intend to do Scotch and Smoke Rings tonight. That's right, two live streams uh, on Steam and what I, Two live streams uh, today. Oh God, that means eight hours on camera. Uh, well, I, I how long my broadcast is gonna be today. I'm already kind of tired from yesterday. I've been working all night and uh, this morning on my lore video, so uh, no promises. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a full four hour broadcast of Baldur's Gate today. Maybe it'll only be an hour, depending on how much I like the game. I don't know, stick around and find out. Um, we're at 3.61 gigabytes of 97 gigs. So it is downloading at a fair clip here. So 10 or so minutes and we should have it downloaded and then it's just the installation process. I upgraded or updated my graphic drivers in preparation for today's broadcast just so that we don't have any weird crazy things happen. But God knows, I mean, we had just weird crazy things happen yesterday during my uh, Jedi Survivor broadcast, including uh, the computer completely shutting down and my save files getting corrupted. So that was fun. Um, I googled a bunch of guides yesterday trying to figure out how to uh, uncorrupt corrupted save files, and there's there's no solution. I tried many of the solutions that worked with the uh, Jedi uh, Last Order or Fallen Order. Jedi Fallen Order, the last game, and none of those worked with Jedi Survivor. Really, the only way I'm going to be able to continue playing that game is if I download somebody else's save file that they've published to the internet and try and get back to where I was in the game, but then I'm not going to have any of the customizations for the character that I've got. I'll essentially, you know, lose any connection that I have to Cal um, that I was playing through. So at this point, I'm thinking that we're just going to have to cancel Jedi Survivor because my game file is, is corrupted. At any rate, at least we've got Baldur's Gate 3 here to enjoy. And it's good to see everybody on Facebook. Toby, Jessica, Alicia, and Steven. Steven says, Yo, Ox, I'm really excited to see you play Baldur's Gate. I've seen a few things, and I can't wait for your reactions. I know absolutely nothing about it. While I was installing the game, I read somewhere that it's based in the Dungeons & Dragons universe. That's all I know. I've never played Baldur's Gate 1 or 2, but from what I gather, I don't really have to have played those two games. It's a completely different story, and um, so I should be able to hop right in and, you know, enjoy the game. So that's what I'm 
hoping for. Alicia Wolf on Facebook says, at work. Good morning, Ox. I hope you have a great day. I might go get a pack of cigars at lunch. Hee hee. Well, <laughs> hee hee, Alicia. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I'm never going to be the first one to recommend people pick up a cigar habit. Um, that said, I, I respect your choice to do so if that's your, your call. Um, I will say, however, if, if you do choose to smoke cigars, don't get gas station cigars, right? Go to a legit cigar shop, buy some hand-rolled cigars. For your first cigar, it's okay. Pay a pretty penny. Buy a $20 cigar. It's just one cigar. It's your first cigar. You know, you're experiencing it. Or maybe, maybe you're an, an old pro, and I'm not giving you enough credit. I don't know. But don't skip, is what I'm saying. Don't skip. And it's great to see everybody on YouTube today. Fishkey, Alt Grendel, Greg, Slidey Bartfast, Automatic Beats, uh, and Julian Z with Greg. It's the first super chat of the day from Greg, a member for 12 months under Silver Ox. I'm so sorry about what happened in yesterday's stream, he says. Yeah, me too. I was really enjoying Jedi Survivor. I, I was really uh, uh, loving the, the different lightsaber stances that I was slowly getting a hold of and I was thoroughly enjoying the story especially what was revealed at the very end um, of my broadcast yesterday the burgeoning relationship between Cal and uh, well the witch I suppose but I'm sad we're not going to be able to continue that oh well such is life uh, Pavel says nice you're playing a game from my recommendation that's the first time in six years I'm giving them well, you know what, Pavel? Every, <laughs> every now and then, every now and then, if you throw enough darts at the dartboard, you might get a bullseye, right? Uh, it, I, and this is this is one of them. So I'm glad that I'm playing a game that you approve of, finally, for the first time, I suppose. All right, we're at uh, 11 gigs of 97. So we still got quite a ways to go. But uh, we're getting there. Uh, Pethos Gloom says Baldur's Gate 3 takes place 100 years after the second one. And in universe, the TTRPG, quote unquote, des Descent to Avernus, end quote, <clears throat> just happened. Only things you need to know, in my opinion. That's c all Greek to me. I have uh, those apparently are things I need to know, but I don't even know what it is that I've just heard that I, I need to know. The Descent to Avernus? I'm sure they'll explain that in the game as I dive in. But it's interesting that this game takes place a hundred years after the second one. I think it's safe to say that if the story is a hundred years after the last story, yeah, we probably don't really need to know the events of the last story. So I'm betting that if they have any references to the previous games, they're gonna come up in like little notes that you find scattered around the universe here and there. So it's not like uh, Jedi Survivor where I really wanted to play Jedi Survivor, but I had to play uh, the previous one, uh, Fallen Order, before moving on to Survivor just so that I could get used to all of the characters. Alicia says, I've been for years now. Haha, ha, I always buy real cigars. Oh, good on you. See, I knew it. Yeah, I was underestimating you. You're an old pro at this. Well, I, I hope you enjoy them. Sarvis the Dro says, I hope you have fun with this game. I don't know if you've ever played Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, but if you have, this game should be familiar. I've never played it seriously. There was a time when I was a kid, and my brother was really getting into Dungeons & Dragons, and he wanted to be um, a dungeon master, a game master. And so he you know, put together a few games, and I participated every now and then. I just pissed him off. Because he put, spent all this time and energy putting together a, a game. And then I would just go through and mess it up. Like, we killed an ogre or something. And I wanted to chop up the body and harvest the, the organs on the black organ market. And he was just sitting there saying, no, no, you can't do that. I'm like, what do you mean I can't do that? I've, I've got a huge axe here. I can chop his heart out. And I bet it's worth something. There's probably someone out there that wants to make a magical potion with an ogre heart. And I've got one right here. I want to make some money. And then he would just roll his eyes and go, okay, you can chop out the ogre heart. Great, great. How much does this? am I going to get for this? And so, well, you got to get to town first and find someone willing to buy it. He, he, I, I didn't play with him after that. He, he, he wasn't interested in playing with me. So, yeah, that's really all of my uh, experience with Dungeons & Dragons. I haven't seen the movie. I haven't really played any on my own. So this is I, this kind of new for me. Like we're rocking, this is going to be my, my real first experience with Dungeons and Dragons. So I'm excited. 
Christina Sierra says, play Borderlands, lol. I've had that re recommended many times, uh, the Borderlands games. You know, I'm not terribly keen on the art style, really. The uh, the cel-shaded art style. But I suppose you can't judge a book by its cover, so maybe I should give Borderlands a go. Odd X with a super chat says, Hi from Rachel. I'm super excited to watch you play this with her. You're in for a treat. Thank you very much, Odd X. I know that the early access version of the game has been out since 2020, so people have been playing the game for a while. Now, they only released the first act to this game in the early access version, so nobody knows the whole story. But people are pretty familiar with the game mechanics and all of that so far, so there are some people that have a bit of an edge on that. This is all going to be new to me, but I am excited to be diving through. Pithos Gloom says, you're right, sorry, meant just need time, period, and name, lol. <laughs> Thank you, Pithos Gloom, but I'm happy to, uh, to get any tips. Like, if you have any lore, anything for me to hear before I dive in that's going to help me out, go ahead and let me know. I, I, I can't wait to read it. Jessica on Facebook says, I had to reset my whole laptop last night. Now pretty much all my settings and apps have to be put back on. Remind me next laptop, no HP laptops. All right, well, I'll, I'll definitely do that. This is why I like building my own computers, because I hate all of that pre-installed software, and they want you to sign up for all these subscriptions. Even with this game, with, I don't understand the state of gaming in 2023, where you can't play a video game unless you give them your email address and maybe even your phone number and sign up to their newsletter. It's the how many games do we have to play where you buy the game with real money, you install the game on your computer, you launch the game, and a screen pops up, preventing you from playing it until you sign up with their website. It's ridiculous. Like, what if, what, what if, you know, back in the 90s, we would go to GameStop and buy a, a, a disc or something and go home to play it and uh, get a knock on the door and say, no, sorry, you can't play this game anymore. We need your, your, your address. We need your phone number so that we can call you, you know, just customer satisfaction or something like that. I understand that it's becoming customary. I mean, Red Dead did it with their Rockstar launcher and then the whole uh, Jedi games with the EA launcher. But I, I, I hate that. I don't like it. And I wish they would stop it. All right, we're at 19.32 uh, gigabytes of 97. We're quickly getting along. The Raging Krogan, a member for 21 months and a Silver Ox, says, Hello, Ox. I just finished the first season of Silo. It is in many ways like a Fallout vault. In some ways, it's darker. In some ways, uh, than Fallout vaults are. Well, thank you, The Raging Krogan. Sounds really interesting. I, I believe you came by and recommended Silo to me in the past. So uh, I'll, I'll try and uh, check it out. Steven Schulte on uh, Facebook says, Tips. Try to have high charisma and perks like speak with nature slash wildlife and speak with the dead. Okay, I like that. I, I enjoy having high charisma characters, especially since having high charisma in games like this unlocks uh, more dialogue and more uh, interesting opportunities. And, I, and that's the part of the game that I enjoy the best. So yeah, maybe I'll dump all my points into charisma. Root Biscuits is 97 gigabytes. The download should be 122.4. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'm in. Uh, are you doing it from the Epic Launcher or GOG? I'm on Steam and it's 97.69 gigabytes. When I installed the early access version of the game, it was 80 something gigabytes. So. I hope I'm installing. I mean, I didn't start installing it until 8.03, right? So I waited until after 8. I should be downloading and installing the full version of the game. Okay. Uh, okay, at 8.02 a.m., 
they released an announcement saying that Baldur's Gate 3 is now out. So I should be downloading the correct version. They announced on Steam that it's out, and uh, I didn't start downloading it until after 8 o'clock. So I think we should be good to go. Pithos Gloom says, Tip, if you want to narrow down race and class, I suggest looking at what will be in the game, then going to D&D Beyond to see the blurbs on them. Cool. Thank you, Pythos. I may have to do that. Phil says, uh, so what game is replacing Jedi on Wednesdays? I, I, I don't know. I haven't gotten that far. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of overwhelmed with everything that I'm already doing this week, so I'll probably figure that out, you know, Tuesday night, maybe even Wednesday morning. Uh, Digetic says mine's 90 as well. Greg says that his is 97. Okay, okay, good. Then I'm downloading the correct version of the game. Well, Ian says that it's 100 gigabytes for him. Hmm, this is weird. Why are we all downloading uh, uh, versions of the game that have different file sizes? The Raging Krogan says the silo is shrouded in mystery. They have been there for a few hundred years, but they cannot go out and do not know when it will be safe. Like Fallout 1. That's exciting. I'm glad you found a game, or I'm sorry, a show that uh, resonates with you, my friend. Colonel 87th says, did you figure out how to fix the Star Wars game? And if not, can you just file mode it to where you were? Um, I didn't and I can't. There's no way to, you know, go into the game and, you know, pick a chapter. Really, the only thing I would be able to do is download somebody else's game file, which I have no interest in doing. I've been customizing my cow, including his looks, his appearance, his stats, his stances, and I don't want to do that all over again. I don't want to start with somebody else's cow. So, at this point, I'm just, um, sadly going to be putting the final nail in the coffin of Jedi Survivor since... They couldn't be bothered to... And you know what? This isn't even a me issue. Uh, I was reading up on it um, after the broadcast yesterday, and so many people are having this exact same issue. Not necessarily at the same moment in the game that I had it, but there, there were hundreds of people. There's an entire thread on the Steam community page uh, with dozens of pages of people saying that their save files have been corrupted. And I know that many other games have had uh, corrupted save files in the past, but I can count on one hand the number of games where I've actually had a corrupted save file. It's it's just minuscule, minuscule. Um, and EA is a big company. Respawn, you know, they've been doing this for a while. It's a it's a pretty well polished game. We shouldn't be having to deal with this. Not in 2023. Odd X says, if you want high charisma, the optimal classes option would be Sorcerer, Warlock, Paladin, and Bard. But you can make anything work. Cool. Uh, Digetic Fridge says, are you downloading the DLC? I don't know. I just bought the game. I didn't. Is there already a DLC for Baldur's Gate 3? I just bought the one thing that was available on the Steam page, just the game itself. So I didn't buy any DLCs. Digetic Fridge says, Ox, the 97 gigabyte download is the wrong one. I just restarted my download and it's 125 gigabytes. Are you kidding me? I'm 30 gigs in and you want me to, to restart this? Okay, I can pause it. Let me click download again. Oh, okay. Yeah, it just jumped up to 100.22 gigs. But thankfully, it saved my progress. Now it's downloading 100.22 gigs. What is going on here? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thankfully, it saved my progress, so I didn't have to download those 30 gigs all over again. Colonel 87th says, I've had that problem before. Some games only have one save file and they want to override it constantly and you have to manually back it up. Any game that requires you to manually back up your save files in order to progress in case the catastrophic happens on your machine is, uh, is not doing their job right. 
It's that that shouldn't be something like clearly somebody needs to put themselves in the perspective of the gamer actually playing the game and come up with solutions to prevent the catastrophic. I mean, I the people say have lots of things to say uh, about Bethesda, but I love the way Bethesda deals with their save files. You've got an autosave, you've got an exit save. The game doesn't autosave when you look at your Pip-Boy. You've got manual saves. You have all of these different save files. They don't automatically overwrite each other. You have complete control over when you save, where you save, and how to access your save files. And that's great. Giving players more control over how they enjoy their game because they've got their own machines and they know how their systems work is, is better. It's the best solution. Trying to uh, have control over absolutely everything. Getting their email address and their phone number, making sure they log into the app and that they've got their save files synced with the cloud and the overriding their save files without asking. It's, all of that sort of nonsense is ridiculous and it shouldn't exist in modern gaming. All right, I'm done with the soapbox. Steven Schulte says there is no DLC for this game. Okay, well then I'm, I'm downloading everything. I guess... Um, I guess they released the full version a little bit after 8, because uh, I started downloading at at about 8.03, and it was the 97 gig version. But then again, I uh, I paused it, and I'm only up to 100 gigs. It's at 100.22 gigs for the version I'm downloading. Interesting. I don't understand why they would have the... Uh, the early access version available anyway. Like, wh why would they still allow you to download the, the early access version? Julian Z says, also, sorry to hear about Jedi Survivor. That's too bad. But do you know what you're going to play instead? I'm still going to push Telltale's The Walking Dead. You know me. I haven't decided. I, I, I'm more than happy to get all of your recommendations at this point for the games. I mean, I've got so many games to replace now. I need to replace Diablo 4 on Monday, which we completed. I need to pl replace Jedi Survivor on Wednesday, which glitched out and corrupted my game, my game saves. Um, I suppose if we really enjoy Baldur's Gate today, I can uh, replace one of those broadcasts with it. Or maybe we'll do what I did earlier in the year and just play one game until it's done. I mean, especially since we're waiting for Starfield, right? When Starfield comes out, as I've said already on this program, everything else pauses. All my live streams pause, all my lore videos pause, and I will be focusing exclusively on Starfield for all of my content. So maybe it makes more sense to just pick one game and get as far in that game as I can during the month of August since Starfield comes out in September rather than get, you know, a third of the way through two different games and then pause them both to play Starfield for the next year, year and a half <laughs> and then pick the other games up next year sometime. We'll see. Ryan2Gamer says, I agree. Borderlands is awesome. It's, it's an awesome franchise. You should try it. Also, what's this? You're giving up on Jedi halfway through a game? Oh, no, that's awful. So sorry. Yeah, I, you know, I, I wouldn't give up on it. I, like, I would love to continue playing it, but my save files got corrupted when the game shut off my computer during a broadcast yesterday. And that's completely out of my control. Like, I, there's nothing I can do about that. Miss Cordelia Chesterfield says, will you be streaming on the day of release for Starfield? Absolutely. I mean, unless something gets in the way. But um, yeah, that's my intention. Phil says, oh yeah, Telltale Walking Dead. You might like it if you get past your dislike for the graphics. Maybe. Uh, graphics are really important to me. I, I, I guess I can't. I, I, it's hard for me to get into a game where I don't enjoy the art style. Um, but... Like I said, maybe I would appreciate the art style better once I fully understand the story.
Okay, let's see. We're at 41 and a half gigabytes out of 100. So we're almost halfway there. Amy Hudson says, thanks for playing this. Watched you today, or watching you today will help me decide if I want to play this. Bummed about Survivor. I love that game. Stupid save files. Yeah, me too. I, I really enjoyed uh, Fallen Order. And uh, is that what it's called? Jedi Last Last Order, Fallen Order, something like that. I, I can never remember the name of that game. I enjoyed the game uh, thoroughly. And, and the gameplay was all right. Uh, Jedi Survivor, I'm really enjoying the gameplay. Uh, I didn't like the controls at first. And it took me a, a long time to get used to it, especially with tab being the dodge button. And there are a number of controls that are bound to the same key grouping on the keyboard, which is really awkward when trying to solve a puzzle. Uh, so it clearly wasn't designed for the PC. I'm still glad I can play it on the PC. That said, uh, I, I loved the, spe the, the specking system, upgrading your character. I loved all of the different stances. It gives you a, a wide variety of combat options. Uh, and the story was really fun. So I'm bummed that I'm not going to be able to finish that. Uh, Bacon Boy says, Howdy Ox, just curious. Next to Fallout, what is your favorite game universe slash series? Game universe? Uh, I don't really think I have one. I mean, there are individual games that I really enjoy. But in terms of a universe where I love going back into that universe game after game after game, I can't think of anything. Maybe the Red Dead uh, universe, but I, I only know it from Red Dead Redemption 2 as I never played Red Dead Redemption 1. So I, uh, I, would, I, I really can't use that as an answer to your question, honestly. Um, there aren't really any other games where I've played a bunch in the series. and I mean, Resident Evil, but every Resident Evil game is kind of its own thing. They have mild references to each other. And even though I think the games are fun, I, I wouldn't say that I'm in love with the universe and the lore. It's okay. It's okay. But it's not something I'm, like, super passionate about. Really, outside of Fallout, there's no game, really, that I'm super passionate about. Uh, F uh, Phil says, yeah, I don't know how I feel felt about the graphics. I just liked it because it was zombies, lol. Zombie games are always fun. Colonel87 says, I say give it a shot. All right, maybe I will. The Raging Krogan says, I know a lot of Star Wars fans are disappointed. Perhaps you can start a different Star Wars game. I know The Force Unleashed is a great series. No game crashing bug. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. There are a lot of games out there, and I gotta figure out what I'm gonna be replacing Monday and Wednesday with. Pyrex, the underachiever, says, ooh, Walking Dead, let's go. All right, another vote in the chat for The Walking Dead. Julian Z says, Orox, you can see it as a setting, a limit for yourself. If you play Telltale's The Walking Dead and don't like it, you have an excuse for dropping it for Starfield. I mean, no matter what I'm playing, I'm going to be dropping it for Starfield. Like, I, I'm really anticipating or highly anticipating Starfield, and I will be playing it no matter what. Um, <laughs> I don't need an excuse to drop a game to play Starfield. It's going to be Starfield, and I'm going to play it because it's NASA core, and uh, I like that. Or NASA punk, I guess is what, is what it's called. Nick Valentine says, you could finish Viscera cleanup detail. <laughs> I, I've still got it installed. Uh, that's a fun game, but good for a charity live stream, I think. I'll save those for my, my yearly charity live streams. Patrick McDonald with a super tip. Thank you so much, Patrick McDonald. Toby on Facebook says, I like the Monday and Wednesday streams being different games. All right. That's good to know. Patrick McDonald says, hey, Oxhorn, I love your content. Seeing as you're playing a Dungeons and Dragons game, have you ever played 
the paper and pencil style with friends. Did you enjoy it? I answered this question earlier in the broadcast, and uh, the answer is really no. I never did. I, I, I gave the anecdote of playing once with my brother, and and that was it because he got pissed off at me. <laughs> but uh, but it was all right. I yeah I, I enjoy paper and pen uh, role playing games. I, I think they're they're a lot of fun. But I've never played um, a Dungeons and Dragons video game before. All right, 52 gigs out of 100.22. Uh, we are over halfway there. The Raging Krogan says, or see you lose your sanity with getting over it. Oh, God, that game. I just, I just can't. Maybe I should play it now. Wait, I can't find it. Did I uninstall it out of rage? I think I may have un uninstalled it out of rage. <laughs> yeah, I can't find it. Could always Goat Simulator. <laughs> Going through all of my charity uh, live stream games. Uh, quite a selection. We, we had a fun time last Christmas with all the, the different games we played. The I Am Bread game. Oh, that was so awful. Frog Factions was fun. Or Frog Fractions. Fifty-five percent. All right, let's see. What can I pull up here while we're waiting for it to download? Is this going to interrupt my download? Let me see. It says 20 minutes remaining. Looks like it's not interrupting my download. That's right, I forgot about it. The sound is really loud. Oh man, my indignity is at four. Why is my indignity so bad? Yay, choose an upgrade. Uh, lock on targeting. Yeah, let's do lock on targeting. That sounds good. Wave one. Oh man, this is how you get all the bugs. my character around so many blocks oh, my frog is gonna be full really soon here hey okay what's what's this next one what can I get cybernetic brain yeah give me a cybernetic brain thank you what did the cybernetic brain do Dignity is only one. No. 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 I 
am clear on the screen. Look at this. Yeah. How does the frog fit all of these bugs in his belly? Oh yeah, look at that. What what can I afford? All right, we got the cybernetic brain. We can do static cling tongue or turtle. Upgrade your lily pad to a turtle friend. Yeah, yeah, I can move. Cool. Now maybe I can get more of the apples too. Uh oh, that one's about to turn red. There's the yellow apple. Oh man, this is testing all of my skills. Dark Souls has nothing on this game. Naughty Applejack says, Hi Oxhorn, hi chat. Well, I bit the bullet, I got the Far Cry New Dawn game. And the ending was great, way better than Far Cry 5. That's exciting, Naughty Applejack. So glad for you. Uninstall lock on targeting? The chicks don't dig on cyborgs and it makes licking bugs less fun anyway. Get the surgeon to uninstall it. No, I, li I like it. Why would I do that? Now let's do this. Static cling tongue. Rub balloons against your tongue before extending it and s nearby bugs will stick to one another. Science. Oh. Yeah, frog factions. What? What? Whoa. Wait. What? Oh, oh, all right. Wait. Oh, man. Now I gotta type words? But at least. At least I've got lasers. Note. Uh, Tenet. Like David Tenet. Tone. Neon. All right, got neon here. Hone. None. Noun. Great. Then. Write that in there. All the apples. The Raging Krogan says, Who needs Baldur's Gate? Just play this for three hours. <laughs> Maybe. Durians. Upgrade your fruit to durians. They smell awful, so bugs will take longer to eat them. Okay. Costs eight fruit. Ooh, what's this? Dragon. Upgrade your turtle friend into a dragon. Yeah. Oh, I can go up. Oh, cool. Oh, I see. I need it. Oh, they're shooting at me now. The bugs are shooting at me. Oh, no. I don't want to die. Hold on. I got to get the... I, I, I'm just now real, realizing that I need fruit in order to upgrade. Wave. Wave one. It's always wave one. When am I going to get to wave two? Oh, I got hit by one of the... Thanks. No, and I missed the fruit. Stop it. Stop it. This is taking all of my concentration. Oh my god. Stop it. I don't remember this. Oh, I guess I failed. Crap. Greg says, so did you ever figure out the reason why everyone wanted you to play this? There is a dark underbelly to the game. I guess I'm realizing that. I think I just died. Stop shooting me. And I'm not getting, now that I can move around, I'm not getting the fruit. I'm trying to avoid getting shot. Uh, how many lives do I have left? Yes! Okay. Warp drive, too expensive. All right, let's do durians. Oh, it's gonna fall. It's gonna fall. Got it. Oh, man, I missed that one. How are they 
is spitting so much. Okay, what can I afford? I can afford uninstall lock on targeting. Alright, I guess I'll do that. I probably regret doing that now. I wish I was faster. My dragon is slow. Oh. If I can get them before they spit at me, that's the key. Yes! Warp drive. Wait, no, what's this? Lock on targeting available. What? Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. Fine. Uh, how many? I need... I've got four fruit. I need... How many? It's, it's not telling me how many fruit I need for that. All right, let's get... Lock on targeting is back. Oh, sauna. All right, sauna. Uh, annotate? Really? Submerge? It's testing my typing powers? Sheet. Hot hostess. See. I mean, they're all... Honest? Stunt. They were all single, like, three-letter words earlier, teens. Shun. Unsheath? Julian Z says, go underwater. Oh, my God. Yay! Thank you, Julian Z. I got all the Dorians. Fruit like a billion. Can I keep going? All right, well, that's it. That's all I need, right? Can I go up and spend it? Now I don't need to worry about fruit anymore. I've got all the fruit. Can I go up? Presents! Ooh, presents! Yes! Warp drive! Oh, I got arrested. 
Oh no. Oh, I gotta choose an option. Mr. Hop, the charges against you are severe. You're accused of breaking and entering into our native habitat, Bug Mars, with intent to purloin our delicious space fruit. How do you plead? Guilty, your honor. Not guilty, your honor. Amphibious, your honor. You've got the wrong dude. My name is Mr. Leap. Has anyone ever told you that you look delicious? Oh God, I'm surrounded by bugs. We're going the oh God. These charges carry a minimum sentence of 20 years hard labor, but there's a special offer this week. How'd you like to become a naturalized citizen of Bug Mars? We've got absolutely, I love it here on Bug Mars. I've never been to a buggy or Mars. You drive a hard bargain. I'll take the labor. I don't know, what are the hours? How do you feel about bribes? If you'll just reach into my front pocket or get them off, get the, get up the box. We're gonna do that. Shall we begin? Our bug flag has four bug stripes. What do they represent? <laughs> Peristalsis, cynecdoche, bugs, crushing our enemies in a powerful mandible, Protecting my precious space fruit from you doggone commie space bugs, your honor. Or, nah, hate bugs, hate bugs. I know that one. Next question. On the series Bug Jersey Shore, what is Bug Snooky's favorite flavor of ice cream? Well, that dates this game, doesn't it? Vanilla, cookie dough, bug. Trick question. Ice cream is unheard of on Bug Mars because of the climate. I don't know. Um, really watched, I rarely watch TV, your honor. I think they're in my hair. I can feel them crawling around. We're gonna do that one. Oh God, four score and 20 bugs ago, bug in chief, bug Thomas Jefferson wrote in the declaration of bugs, what are the blessed, what are blessed with which inalienable rights? Uh, the right to bugs, the right to own sentient space fruit as slaves. The right to refuse to testify against your hive mind in court. The right to parade around the courtroom in only your knickers. How the hell should I know I'm a frog or... Oh God, bugs everywhere! Oh God, bugs everywhere. During the War of Bug 1812... All right, hold on, this is gonna go on forever. Uh, how are we doing? We are at 85.7 gigabytes of 102 gigabytes. We've got seven minutes left. All right. I'm going to relight my cigar here. Okay, back to the bugs. <laughs> During the War of Bug 1812, General Stonewall Bug Jackson held off the nefarious frog armada single-handedly. How many mecha frogs did he crush under the wheels of his Mercedes bugs? Enough to reach the ground? We don't know, they hadn't invented counting back then. 420, I swear. They counted them twice, that's not just a pot joke. None, he didn't learn to drive stick until after his divorce. Or, they bite, oh, they bite, oh, they bite, 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 bite. I'm gonna do that one. <laughs> Last question, Mr. Hop. How do you feel about fractions? I, um, was told there'd be no math on this exam. Oh man, I love them. They're an intuitive way to represent a non-integer value. I'm actually leaning slightly towards scientific notation these days. I don't know, I've never really dealt with them. I think my chair is made of bugs. Am I made of bugs? I'm impressed, Mr. Hop. Yours is the first perfect score our fake naturalization program has ever seen. We were going to fire you into the sun, but instead we've decided to issue you a work visa. If you'll just sign here. Yeah. F yeah. Fist pump. YOLO. Or box, box, box. We're gonna go box. All right, everyone loves a novelty signature. Just ask Bug John Hancock. Working holiday visa, Bartholomew Salience, apparently is my name. Date of birth, Bug 2012 6'5", Chiton donor. And there's my address. Oh, it's got a, uh, what's my name, Bartholomew? Oh, God. Bartholomew Salience. <laughs> oh, more bugs. Just get more bugs. 
Shooting at me. I am Bartholomew Salient. And I am on Bug Mars. And I will eat all of you bugs. Oh, uh oh, my dragon is getting slow. It's because, oh, I'll miss the present. Man. I didn't want to miss on present. All right, what do I got now? I got stocks. No, it's too expensive. Uninstall the lock on targeting. Why? Okay, fine, I'll uninstall the lock on targeting. Oh, it's just making it harder. I like the lock on targeting. Oh, maybe it's lock on targeting or sticky. Oh yeah, look at them all. Just, oh, Mr. Present again. Give me those durians. Yes! Now, can I afford it? No, it's still too expensive. So I'm go I gotta go, no thanks. Wait, no, I can get it again. Yay, lock on targeting. Oh man, scuba. Uh, doodad. Fine. Ideation. Ditto. Nineteen. Shoe shine. Sanitation. Yikes. They are not giving me a break. Unused. Assidious. <laughs> Jeez. Intonation. Hoist! Attendant? Yes! Oh, I still can't afford it, so we gotta remove the lock on targeting again. Wave! Mars! Give me all the bucks! Man, the flies, they've got the red dots. They really hurt. Stop moving, bugs! Gotta get them before they fire at me. That's a lot of bugs. I can add it again? Well, I should just stop spending my money. I'm gonna say no thanks. One of these days, I will defeat the bugs on Bug Mars. And eat all the durians. Oh man, I missed my lock on targeting. Maybe I should go get that back. Can I go underwater here too on Bug Mars? Let's try going underwater. Alright, what's this? Still can't get it, so I'm gonna go, no thanks. Yes, I can go underwater! Oh, but there's no durians here. Ooh, what did I just find? As conceived in 1632 by Portuguese printing press operator André Felipe, boxing was a gentleman's game in which two men would square off and regale each other with stories monotonous for days Okay, I think end, I remember this, yeah. Until one of we them get the fell history to the ground from boredom or exhaustion. Over the next few years, the new sport developed a respectable following of a few hundred local socialites. How deep are the, are the tunnels on Mars? Oh, this music is so chill. I can't eat any of the fish with my frog, though. That's too bad. Oh, I've got two paths. Right or left? Right or left? Let's go left. It was Felipe's son, André Felipe Felipe, who developed what he called the punching strategy in 1637 after seeing a schoolboy strike another in anger, causing him to fall down. When André Felipe Felipe right. challenged the then champion, British expatriate sleepless Bill Bishop to a match, Bishop was the odds-on favourite. You can imagine his surprise when, while he was describing what he had had for breakfast that morning, André ah. walked up and thumped him in the neck, sending him down for the count in the parlance of our time. The parlance of our time. Is this guy straight up just reading a Wikipedia article in his video game? While it was universally agreed that the boy had violated the spirit of the game, 
officials were unable to find any actual rule that punching violated and were forced to let the victory stand. This upset caused an uproar in the boxing community large enough to spill over into local newspapers, which drew the interest of many outsiders to come see what all the fuss was about. The newcomers were enthralled to engage in these borderline barbaric displays of human strength and skill, and the rest is history. After a few sports sports school moms, single-minded about safety, added the padded gloves, of course. Right, school moms are responsible for the padded gloves in boxing. Today's boxing enthusiasts fantasize about a newcomer that would rock the ring the way Felipe did. Calcification of the modern rule set has essentially locked the punching strategy into place, but it's easy to get caught up in the fantasy. A submarine! Young scholars with big dreams often enter the ring with their crazy new trick usually a variant of hypnosis, and though they've achieved oh, the occasional end. victory, none of the gimmicks have been robust enough to make it to the big time. Well, we found the submarines on Mars. I wonder if they're piloted by bugs. Has it been seven the real minutes? wonder, though, <laughs> is that Andre Felipe's original vision of boxing is still around. Gentlemen's boxing clubs can be found in cities all over the world. You can visit one most any day of the week and see two erudite gentlemen exchanging pleasantries in the ring. Most people only come to watch a few hours of a match and then leave. But every once in a while you'll find amongst your elders a stout fellow, a die-hard fan, who perhaps witnessed that historic battle between Felipe and Bishop who for love of the sport must stay to witness the last glorious seconds oh. of wakefulness slip away. I found a spaceship! Only to return to fight again another day. Yay, I can leave Mars! Hooray! I love how the sound effect is just... Command module? What? Is that it? The rumbling seems to have stopped, and you feel the intense downward pressure let up. After a moment, you calm down enough to start t uh, taking in your surroundings for the first time since the seemingly dormant vessel sprang to life. Command module. The walls of this circular room curve to meet at a point that must correspond to the curved nose of the outer hall. Lining the walls, you see a porthole, a glowing display, and a control deck. A ladder leads aft. If you don't know how to get started, type help and press enter. What's next? Uh, let's try ladder. I don't understand that verb. Um, climb. Ladder. Captain's quarters. This looks like an all-purpose lip. What, wait a minute. Hold on. What am I doing? I'm playing the wrong game here. Is it done? Is it done? It's done! It's done! Okay, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna exit this. No, I'm quit. Quit to main menu. Really quit. Just, come on. Just, I really do quit. Don't ask me if I really want to quit. Yes! Really quit! It's asking me twice. Really quit. All right, hold on. While we launch this thing, let me make sure I didn't uh, miss any super chats here. <laughs> the Raging Krogan says, Hot Hostess? Something you want to share with us? Did I say Hot Hostess? I was trying to read all of the text. Did I say something wrong? Axon Media Los Angeles says, uh, Hey Ox, today is my birthday, 42, but not any closer to understanding the meaning of life. Are you still doing scotch and smoke rings tonight? I'm loving MFN. There's just something about those creepy childhood nostalgia games. Yes, I am doing scotch and smoke rings tonight, and we will play My Friendly Neighborhood tonight. Uh, and congratulations on your birthday. I turned 42 yesterday. The meaning of life and everything. Man of Warb, uh, Warb says, uh, is this game Bug Doors Gate? It might as well be. Matt Rowland says, Ox, great to see you, my friend. Sorry to hear about the Jedi Survivor experience. Here's to your new game and to my favorite streamer ever. Thank you, Matt Rowland. All right, we're launching. Okay. That's logging me in to some sort of other launcher. Alarian Studios launcher? Fire. Fire. There we go. All right. It's nine o'clock. It only took us an hour.
And it's loading. Oh, end user line search. Yeah, okay, fine. Show nudity. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you. This adventure contains mature and sensitive subject matter. You can moderate some of this content by toggling the option below. I'm so glad they gave me this. It's a, a safe streamer mode. Yay, I'm not going to get demonetized. All right, this is looking good. Press any key to continue. All right, let's go to options here. Is there anything I want to change? Show genitals? Goodness, exactly how how much nudity is in this game? This is reminding me of uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Share private moments? All right, we'll keep all of these off for now. I, I didn't realize it was this graphic of a game. <laughs> all right, aspect ratio. Display mode. Looking pretty good. All right. I don't think I need to change any of this. Wait, hold on. One more thing. I want to make sure subtitles are on audio. Cinematic. Where's subtitles? Tutorial, ping. So, there we go. It's already turned on. Great. I don't have to do anything. New game. Uh, Explorer, a narrative experience placing story before combat. Balanced, a balanced adventure, or tactician. I'll go balanced. Oh, come on. Yeah, thank you. I'm guessing that's an orc. This, I have no idea, like an undead, maybe? Suddenly Lovecraftian. Ew. Oh, God. No, this is the most. Ah. Ah, this is my worst nightmare. This is how they start the game? Oh, no. I'm sure they'll explain that later. Enable tutorial. Who yeah. Who are you? Okay. <laughs> character customizer. Um. So it looks like we've got some preset characters here. Uh, Storian, Lazelle. This is the lady we saw get her eyeball munched on by the slug. Gale, Shadowheart, Will, Larak, and the Dark Urge. Nice, exactly. What is the Dark Urge? I want to make my own guy. Oh, cool, we can be like hobbits and stuff. We can randomize. Huh. Um, what's this? Next generated character. Let's, um... Okay, can I... Origin custom race half elf. Okay. Um, each of these are races. We've got 
elf, a trifling, a dro, a human, a gith yankee. I was wrong. I thought it was an orc, but it's an it's a gith yankee. Alt Grendel says the music is a bit loud. Okay, I turned it down a bit. All right, so we've got a gith yankee, a dwarf, a half elf, a halfling, a gnome, a dragonborn, and a half orc. I think I either want to be a dwarf or a half orc. I think that sounds fun. Wait, but half orcs aren't going to have good charisma, are they? Race features, uh, you can move nine meters per turn, you can see in the dark, relentless endurance, and savage attacks. Human is nine meters per turn, weapon proficiency, in spears, pikes, halberds, and glaives. Human versatility, huh, an additional skill to be proficient in. What about a half elf? That's half of elf and human, so we should get the best of both worlds, right? Nine meters. Civil Militia, you have weapon proficiency with spears. All right, so we got those from the human. But then we get Dark Vision and Fey Ancestry. Pythos Gloom says Tafling is pronounced Tiefling, and a dro is pronounced Dura'o. Dura'o? It doesn't look like Dura'o. It's a weird name. Dura'o. I think I want to go half orc. That sounds fun. All right, class ranger. All right, we can do barbarian, bard. <laughs> it could be a half orc bard. Uh, cleric. It's like a priest class, right? Druid, fighter, monk. Paladin, Ranger, Rogue, Sorcerer, Warlock, and Wizard. I want to be a Bard. He's got 17 Charisma. Look at that. Plus three to Charisma checks. <laughs> I like it. Cantrips. What's a cantrip? Vicious Mockery, Blade Ward, Spells, actions, class features. Cantrips. Oh. Are these like perks? <laughs> Where do you... I want to customize my face. Edit appearance. Body type. One... Or two. Oh, okay, so that's male or female. Identity, male or female. Does this change appearance? Non-binary, other. Your voice. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. More of those wretched things. All right, that one maybe. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. Where to next? I guess seven. Let's hope the locals are friendly. All right, we've got face. Head one. Head two. Three. Four. Five. I kind of like this. Skin color. Olive Tone, Olive Tone 5. Oh, wow, I could be like a, an albino orc. Oh, look at all of these features, super detailed. What What's a canonical skin color for an orc? I don't know what it is. Like, in Dungeons and Dragons, can you canonically have all of these? Oh, wow. Okay, so I can click all skin colors, and it pops out to skin colors not normally used by this particular race. Okay, so let me stick with skin colors that 
that this race uh, has. I think I want a shade of green because he is an orc, but he's only a half orc, so maybe green. Yeah, this looks nice. Half human, half orc. That's a little too rosy. Something like this. Scarring. Oh, what's this? This is no scar. Eye scar. Another eye scar. Nose scar. I mean, maybe I could roleplay that he's a bard, but he's a really bad bard. And so people in the pubs, they're just constantly throwing glass at him. <laughs> so he's got lots of scars all over his body. Oh, wow. Those are like tribal scars. Maturity. So that's like age, age lines. I want him to be old. I just turned 42. I'm feeling, I'm feeling my age. I'm gonna have him be old. Freckle quantity. Eh, I don't really see a change there. Freckle intensity. Vitiligo pigmentation. Whoa! Okay. Interesting. Wow. <clears throat> Body art. <laughs> Let's get some little crows on there. You know, if I maybe <clears throat> could role play that, I go to Hot Topic every day. <laughs> oh, he's got squids in his eyes. Former. I should probably come up with a story, right? Like a backstory for this guy. Uh, maybe I'll. Let's see. Do I want a face tattoo? Which of these is inspiring a story? Uh, I'm not really getting many. It's a neck tattoo. Little runes. What about like musical notes? Could I get musical notes all over? You know what? I'm not feeling the tattoos. Okay, no tattoos. Piercing style. None. Fastener stars. Oh, that is hardcore. He's got something in his ears. With with ears that magnificent, he's got to have at least something in his ears. Lapis stud muffin. Subduer loops. Midnight tears. That's eh, all right. Silver gold gala. Dark moons. Yeah, but it's got an eyebrow there. Red skin tilla. No, nothing like that. Chulton serpents. Crimson hilt dirks. That's pretty cool. Barovia fangs. Minotaur ring. Oh, wow. It's right there in the nose. Easy breezy. Got some little skulls there. Arch face swirls. Commoner ring. Bard rings. Okay. I better have bard rings since I'm a bard. All right, so we did body art and piercings. Eye color. Heterochromia, so that's uh, different colors in the eyes. All right, so we can choose a different color for each eye. I'll just, uh, let's see. Do, do orcs have green eyes since they're green? Or purple, I guess. Canonically, orcs can have purple eyes, too. That's pretty cool. Oh, brown looks nice. I like those brown eyes. I'm tempted to go green. He's already so green. Let's go with brown eyes. And do we want makeup? Oh, man, it's the extra from Kiss makeup. <laughs> Ooh, just a little dot there. <laughs> Of the eye? <laughs> I don't know if I have it in me to do any makeup. Let's just make up one. We've got some mascara going on. Okay, we're not going to do makeup. No makeup. Hair. Oh, I didn't even think about hair. Do orcs have hair? <laughs> I didn't even think orcs can have hair. Oh. Is this ridiculous? Should I not have hair because I'm an orc? I could be a balding orc. 
<laughs> wow, look at these. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm half human, half orc, half uh, Leia. Princess Leia. <laughs> Tell you what, I didn't know that orcs could have hair. <clears throat> um, so this is overwhelming. I mean, look at this. Wow, flock of seagulls. <laughs> That's so great. Oh, those flowing locks. That is luscious. Oh, that's a bard's haircut right there. <laughs> oh, I actually really like that. Oh, yeah, he looks cool with that. I don't know. I was seeing him as a bald um, orc. But now that I see all these hairstyles, I want to try one. <laughs> These are great. Look at all this stuff. I like this. Oh, he looks great. Look at that. All right, hair color. I've got black, brown, but he's an orc, so. Oh, man, now I just look like the Joker. I don't think an orc, would an orc have green hair? This game is, ask, is causing me to ask questions I never thought I would ask. Does an orc have hair? Does an orc have green hair if he does? Black, neutral, brown. I mean, the brown kind of looks good with his skin tone. The pink, not so much. I know he's a half orc, so he's, I guess I can explain away the hair that he's half human, half orc, so he's got some human hair in there. The yellow, <laughs> Look at the shade of yellow here. That green is just phenomenal. Gray hair, okay, he could be an older bard. White hair. I don't know, I'm thinking brown. This brown color looks really good. Maybe a little darker. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Highlights. Natural blonde. What's highlight intensity? Ooh. Okay, we've got multi-tonal. Um, all highlight colors. Oh, that's a lot. All right, let's stick with just the ones that are suitable for this guy. Um, do I want blonde highlights or <laughs> green? Maybe a little bit of green, right? To, to hint back to his orc heritage, the slight gr green highlights in there, I should probably get. Or maybe yellow? Well, let's go green. What about this color of green? That's really vibrant if I turn the, the opacity up there. Let's put it down to like there. Really minimal, just slight green highlights in there. Nick Valentine says, we orcs totally have hair. I didn't know. Graying. Okay, gray natural, graying intensity. All right, so I guess I'm going to make him an older, an older guy. So let's pick a gray color. Dusty. Charcoal. Oh, wow, this is so intense and in-depth. All right, that's a good white gray. Now, let's turn it down and then just a little. Ah, that's a bit much. I, I think it's a bit much to have highlights and graying at the same time. Maybe it's the hairstyle I chose. There, just a little bit of graying. Okay, 
Okay, cool. Facial hair. Oh, yes. Yes! <laughs> He's a wizard. He's a wizard orc bard. Oh, look at these beards. That's beautiful. That's amazing. A little bit tied there. <laughs> Let's see, I like this uh, tied knot at the bottom. That kind of looks like um, a bard. Zoom out, zoom out a little bit. All right. I also like how sort of um, curly and windswept that is. This is just really big. <laughs> That's a big beard. Okay, if maybe if I was a magician, I would have that one. This is nice and short. It's just, I don't know, I like this. I like this and I like this. Okay, I think I like this the best. This is great. All right, let's edit character. So there's my custom appearance. Oh man, he looks amazing. All right, half orc, class bard, cantrips. I now need to pay attention to, to whatever a cantrip is. Change your cantrip selection by choosing from the spell list below. Cantrips don't use spell slots and can be cast at will. Okay, so it's like free spells, free magic. Obi-Wan Kenny says, Ox, think you'll have your character created before Scotch and Smoke Rings tonight? <laughs> Maybe. I'm having fun with this guy. He looks great. All right, let's see. We've got Vicious Mockery, 1 to 4 damage, Insult a Creature. It has disadvantage on its next attack roll. Yeah, a bard would probably be really good at insulting a creature. Then we've got Blade Ward. Take only half the damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. But then we've also got Mage Hand. Create a special hand. I'm sorry, a spectral hand that can manipulate and interact with objects. Oh man, I, I guess I don't know what all of this would do. Gain advantage on your next attack roll. Friends. In higher difficulty modes, the target might accuse you of enchanting them. Dancing lights <clears throat> illuminate a 9-meter radius. Light. Infuse an object with an aura of light. And a minor illusion. Create an illusion that compels nearby creatures to investigate. All right, well, I like Vicious Mockery. That's probably what a bard would have. And then, Blade Ward? Maybe I want Light. Infuse an object with an aura of light, or illuminate in a nine millimeter, ra er, a nine meter radius. I guess let's do Light. Dancing Lights. Okay, Spells. Choose the spells you know from the list below. Spells require spell slots to cast, unless a feature states otherwise. We currently have selected Healing Word, Heal a Creature You Can See, Dissonant Whispers, Frighten a Creature, It Will Be Easier to Hit and Cannot Move, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, Leave a Creature Prone with Laughter Without the Ability to Get Up, or Heroism, Make Yourself or a Target Immune to Frightened, and gain five temporary hit points each turn. All right, well, this one definitely is something a bard would have. What else do we have? Animal friendship. Convince a beast not to attack you. Bane, up to three creatures, receive a, a 1d4 penalty to attack rolls. Charm person, charm a humanoid to prevent it from attacking you. That's definitely something a bard would have. Cure wounds... Healing. All right, so this is heal a creature I can see. This is heal a creature I can touch. Disguise self. Change your appearance. Um, fairy fire. All targets within the light turn visible. Feather fall. You and nearby allies gain immunity to falling damage. Long strider. Increase a creature's movement speed by three millimeters. Sleep. Put a creature into a magical slumber. Speak with animals, gain the ability to comprehend and communicate with beasts. Thunder Wave, release a wave of thunderous force that pushes away all creatures and objects. All right, I should probably keep my healing spell. Um, 
I, I should probably keep laughter, because that's what a bard would do. Then let's get rid of Dissonant Whispers and Heroism, and then give me uh, Charm Person, because the bard should be able to charm people, and then charm animals. Speak with animals? Yeah, a bard should be able to speak with animals, right? Uh, Cannibal Banana says, Just got out of a meeting to see that you're playing uh, Baldur's Gate. Love the old top-down games because of my motion sickness. Curious to see how the new version is. Yeah, me too. Alt Grendel says, And he shall be named Den the Bard. Den, I haven't even given him a name yet, have I? Daniel Holmes says, Morning Ox, you have dark vision. You don't need light. Oh. Right. Yeah, I guess you're right. Thank you. So I guess I don't need light. Um, gain advantage on non-charisma checks against non-hostile creatures. True strike. Mage hand. I guess we'll just go with this. Starting instrument. Pick the instrument you'd like to use. It will influence the soundscape when you cast spells and can be changed later by equipping a different instrument. There's the hand drum, the flute, the lute, That is definitely a bard's instrument. The lyre. Or the violin. Well, lute is definitely what I think of when I think of a bard, but I love the sound of the lyre. Yeah, let's go with Liar. Okay, background acolyte. Oh, background acolyte. You've spent your life in service to a temple, learning sacred rites and providing sacrifices to the gods or the guards, gods you worship. Serving the gods and discovering their sacred works will guide you to greatness, skills, insight, and religion. Insight is wisdom plus two. Read people and situations, detect lies. <clears throat> Intelligence plus three. Recognize deities. Understand holy rites. Charlatan. You're an expert in manipulation, prone to exaggeration, and more than happy to profit from it. Yeah, that sounds like a good bard. Bending the truth and turning allies against each other will lead to greater success down the road. Skills deception, lie and cheat, manipulate the truth, and sleight of hand. Wield nimble fingers, steal stuff. Okay, well, I don't really want to be a thief. There's criminal. You have a history of breaking the law and survive by leveraging less than legal connections. Profiting from criminal enterprises will lead to greater opportunities in the future. Skills, deception, plus five. Lion sheet, manipulate the truth. And stealth, stand of sight, melt into the shadows. Entertainer, oh, this is perfect. You live to sway and subvert your audience, engaging common crowds and high society alike. Preserving art and bringing joy to the hapless and downtrodden heightens your charismatic aura. Skills acrobatics plus four. Keep your balance, land on your feet, helps you resist being shoved, and performance plus five. Entertain audiences, command the stage. All right, yeah, I think that's what I want. Well, let's go ahead and read the others. We've got Folk Hero. You're a champion of the common people, challenging tyrants and monsters to protect the helpless. Saving innocence in imminent danger will make your legend grow. Guild Artisan. Your skill in a particular craft has earned you membership in a mercantile guild, offering privileges and protection while engaging in your art. Repairing and discovering rare crafts will bring new inspiration. Noble. You were raised in a family among the social elite, accustomed to power and privilege. Accumulating renown, power, and loyalty will raise your status. Outlander, 
You grew up in the wilds, learning to survive far from the comforts of civilization. Surviving unusual hazards of the wild will enhance your prowess and understanding. Sage, <clears throat> you are curious and well-read with an unending thirst for knowledge. Learning about rare lore of the world, oh God, I should do this one, will inspire you to put this knowledge to greater purpose. This gives us arcana, intelligence plus three, recognized magic, interact with enchanted items and history intelligence plus three remember the past of the world and its people i mean if i was making myself as a character i'd probably do this because of the lore bit soldier you are trained in battlefield tactics and combat having served in a militia mercenary company or officer corps show smart tactics and bravery on the battlefield to enhance your prowess and Urchin. After surviving a poor and bleak childhood, you know how to make the most out of very little. Using your street smarts bolsters your spirit for the journey ahead. All right, so those are all of the backgrounds, and I think we'll do Entertainer. That makes the most sense for a bard. Abilities, oh my god. I might just do default here because <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. I'm gonna just do default. Skill proficiencies, Acrobatics, Stealth, Deception, Intimidation, Performance, and Persuasion. Um, deception. Lie and Cheat, Manipulate the Truth. Granted from race, intimidation. Inherited from background, performance. All right, so I don't need these acrobatics, intimidation, or performance. They're from my race. Persuasion plus five, that makes sense. Deception though, do I need deception? Athletics minus one. I probably want athletics though, if I'm a bard, right? No, not athletics, acrobatics. Sleight of hand. Animal handling. Influence animals, pet all of the dogs. I probably want insight. Or perception. Well, there may be a reason why <clears throat> orcs are not typically bards. Yeah, I think that's what I want. Okay. Are we good to go? Enter name. Bard horn, ox bard, horny bard, bardy horn. I like bardy horn. Do you like bardy horn? Or corn says bacon boy. Oxel rose. <laughs> Orc Bard, Orc Horn. I like Bardy Horn, says Lauren. I like Bardy Horn, too. I think we're going Bardy Horn. You need a guardian. Choose one. A guardian? I get to create another character? 
Oh my goodness. Oh wow, I thought it was done, but no, I'm, I'm creating another character. Uh, a guardian, huh? Well, uh... Okay, dro, Trifling, Human. Get the Yankee. What is a get the Yankee? With a ruthless, a ruthlessness born from mind flayer enslavement, get the Yankee, ride the astral sea atop red dragons, bringing their silver swords and psionic magic to bear against any trace of the Illithiad menace. Dwarf, elf, half elf, halfling, gnome, or another half orc. <laughs> a half orc and a half elf walk into a barn. Yeah, I think a half elf would make make sense. So who a guardian though? All right, well if my character is a bard, I guess I should probably make this person a warrior, right? Race sub race. I didn't know you could choose a sub race. Hi half elf, a touch of the fey wild remains in half elves with this bloodline. Wait a minute. I see. Half-Orc doesn't have a sub-race. But Half-Elf does. Old Master says apparently this Guardian can be a romance option. Oh, okay, so am, am I... Am I making a, a... What is it the kids say these days? A waifu? <clears throat> a waifu? Alright, uh, time to make my Half-Orc a waifu. High Half-Elf, a wood half... Okay, hold on. A touch of the Feywild, a wood half-elf. Like their wood elf parents, these half-elves have a quickened stride and an eye for stealth, yet many break away from isolation in Feyruin's forests to explore the rest of the realms, or a drow half-elf. Most half-drow result from liaisons between Seldarine drow and sur surfaces, surfacers, while half-drow inherited, or I'm saying it wrong, it's dra drao. Is that right? Deroa inherited a few magical gifts. They aren't usually raised in the Underdark. Let's do a high half elf. General. All right. Well, if I'm making a waifu, I might as well make a female. Remarkable. Follow your instincts. Don't be afraid. That's a high elf voice. Remarkable. Truly. Follow your instincts. Don't be afraid. Okay, now we're doing face for my companion. Face one. No, no, no. Head one. Head two. Head three. Head four. Five. Six. Seven. What's the difference in the heads? All right, I guess that one. Julian Ziza's ox, it's pronounced why then foo. Law. Why then foo? Why Ifu? Why then Fu? All right, skin color. So he's a half elf, or she's a half elf and a half half elf, half human. Um, but they come in a wide range of colors. Oh, purple! Wow. Okay, that's a it's quite a color there. Pale color. All right, let's try that. Michael Cosmas says, Hi, Ox, a, ni a new game ID to play. Guilt is having Alan Wake vibe. It'll take about two or three streams. Came out 7th of July. Uh, guilt? 
All right, I'll have to look that up later. Colonel 87 says, keep it funny, give her a man's voice. Yeah, but if I have to romance this character later, I don't know if I could do that. Julian Z says, Lolox, maybe this is better waifu, waifu? Is it waifu? Well, why isn't there an H in there? Zarteth says, dro rhymes with frow. Oh, thank you, drow. That's all you had to say, not dro, ow, oh, let's, let's, dro rhymes with frow, drow. Okay, I'm going to have to remember that. Okay, scarring. All right, so she's my protector, right? A guardian. <clears throat> so she's seen some battle. All right, so lots of the same scars here. That's a rough scar right there. I like that. Maturity. All right, I'm an older guy. Let's make her middle-aged, like right around there. Freckle quality. Freckle intensity. Whoa! <laughs> body type. You can choose body type? Did I forget that on my last guy? Oh. Oh. Okay, so a slight one or a big beefy one. All right, she's my protector. I'm making her big and beefy. spending an hour creating these characters. I didn't know I was going to have to make another character. Body art. I don't think I want any body art. Good stripe piercings. Eyebrow. I can't see them because of the hair. Let's choose hair. <laughs> there we go. Now we can go to body art and go to piercings. She's got nice big ears, too, so let's give her some earrings, at least. Ooh, those are nice. Lapis stud muffin. But she's also my protector. So maybe something brutal like that, with spikes and swords and stuff. Okay, let's go to eyes. Eye color, what's a good eye color for a, a half human, half elf? I don't know. Like, I know what elves are like in Lord of the Rings, but I don't know what elves are like in Dungeons and Dragons. Um, let's do, do like a sky blue. Yeah, that looks nice. Makeup. All right, so we've got none. Oh, wow. Oh, that is... <laughs> that is styling right there. That's kind of nice for a, uh, a barbarian... Warrior lady. Eye makeup color, black, lip tint, red one. Lip coloration intensity. Oh my God. So many options. Metallic tint level. Wow. Glossy tint level. All right, let's make them semi-glossy and the color not too bright. Let's just bring that down to zero. And then that color doesn't appear to be changing much. Okay. Now let's go to hair. Oh, that's cool. All 
but she's half elf, right? These are more elf hairstyles. Oh, well, that's nice. But she's also a warrior, so maybe she has short hair so that the hair doesn't get in the way of her combat. <laughs> she's got a receding hairline, guys. Oh, well, that's nice, too. It's a bit too long, though. All right, so we've got, like, Solemn Huntress. So these are pixie cuts. I like that. Okay, hair color. If elves are blonde and humans, I mean, humans are blonde too. She's probably got a, a blondish hair color. A golden hair color, yeah. Like that. Like a brown gold. I like that. Highlights, taupe. Red highlights. Um, pink highlights. Man, I guess there's a reason I'm not an artist because I have no idea what to do here. It's already blonde, so a highlight should be lighter than blonde. Like gray white. Let's, let's make it a little earthy. That dulls it a little bit. That's kind of nice. And then gray. She's If she's middle-aged, she's got a little bit of gray in there. She doesn't look middle-aged anymore. Let's go back to general. Maturity. Did I lose the maturity? There. And she got some age lines in there. I can give her facial hair! Yeah! <laughs> wow, they let you do absolutely anything. That's great. <laughs> oh, look at that. I can give her a big old handlebar. <laughs> this is brilliant. <laughs> Oh, she's amazing. <laughs> Wait, spell. <laughs> Wade Speakerman uh, gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you so much, Wade. And congratulations to Hunter Five Trouble, Ryan Gonzalez, uh, Gadept88, and Adrian B. <laughs> Oh man, look at this. <laughs> I can't. No, all right, we're not we're not doing this. I, I got to calm down. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I think she looks like uh like a warrior. Wait, what happened to the wounds on her face? Didn't I give her... Didn't I give her like a, a slash on her face or something? I 
I guess it didn't save this part. AFK, one second, everybody. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm guessing it didn't save anything that I did on this page because I had to go back and put in the maturity again and I'm having to put the scarring back in again. Let's go ahead and go with that and then do I need to do... I know, I did the face already and I, okay, it saved the skin tone. Okay, I think we're done. Looks great. Venture forth. Loot Goblin says Ox Lore. Oxhorn's first love was the bearded lady. guy is connected to his ship. He felt pain when his ship was hurt.
I'm sure it'll all become clear in a bit. Oh, there he is, Barty Horn. Looking great with that beard. My head. Okay, so Wasset moves the camera. Uh, plus, plus shape you. Center camera, you can always refocus the camera around your character. Home to center the camera. Left mouse button, double click portrait to center the camera. Let's get going. Find Flare Pod. Might still be stuck inside if we hadn't been attacked. Use Barty Not getting back in that thing. Obviously, not getting back in that thing. Nursery. This is the pool that Bing came from. The parasite now writhing behind your eye. Oh. We could reach towards the pool, investigate the pool, or leave. Let's investigate. Skill checks, general tutorial. Some dialogue options require a skill check, a dice roll that must meet or exceed a target number. Your character skill skills add a bonus to this roll. Click the dice roll. Oh, wow. This is straight up pen and paper. Okay. No. I failed the dice roll there. You notice nothing more than meets the eye. I could reach toward the pool or leave. Um, I don't think I want to go back in there, so we're going to leave. Someone else got out. Might be other survivors. Not everyone made it out alive. Probably shouldn't touch the fire. Oh, this is interesting. Mind flare. Well, the mind flare's dead. Amethyst, take all. Dead. Good. So the guy who kidnapped us and put a slug in our eye is dead. What's this? Wonder who was inside. I right, guess we don't know who's inside. Made it out. Restoration. Uh, I feel better. Sphincter. Yeah, let's go through the sphincter. Oh. They had to call it a sphincter. These boots have seen her. Use middle mouse button E or Q to rotate the camera. Viscous chair or a goblin. Goblin's dead. You can sit in the viscous chair. Images of goblins, their habits and histories flash into your mind. Okay, so this guy was um, kidnapping people to research them, I guess. Help us. All right. A 
cerebral aquarium. Mind flayer horticulture. Touch the fire. Uh. Neural apparatus. Whoa. Doesn't do anything. Okay, uh, I seem to be killing my character here. <laughs> yes, you've come to save us from this place. Ew! From this place you'll free us. The exposed brain quivers in expectation. Please, before they return! They return. Okay, what to say to the talking brain? Greg says quick tips hold the Alt key to highlight interactable objects and loot. The tilde key will also highlight characters. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, who am I talking to? A man or a brain? A newborn. Born new from this husk. You realize you're talking to an intellect devourer, a minion of the mind flayers who abducted you. Okay. I probably don't want to release a minion. You sound afraid. Why? The enemy. So many enemies. I think you're past the point of saving. Tell me what to do. Remove us from this body. From this case. Free us. Investigation, inspect the exposed brain. Hey! You notice a edema, a swelling of the brain causing pressure where it strains against the shell of the skull. Well, we could destroy the brain, or pass a strength check to break the skull, a dexterity check to gently prize the brain from the skull, a medicine check to attempt a cerebral extraction, staying mindful of the swelling. I guess we'll try medicine? Click the dice to roll. Advantage lets you roll two dice to take the higher result before adding modifiers. Success. The brain lifts from the skull, but you notice an opportunity. You could cripple the strange creature, making it more subservient should it prove a threat. We <laughs> Um, we could pass a de dexterity check to mutilate the brain or spare the creature. Any injuries might weaken it. If it's a minion of the Mind Flayer, I can't trust it. So let's mutilate the brain. I need a 15. Oh, dear. Ooh, no. 
No good. Well, that probably didn't do anything. Or did I ruin it? Uh-oh. Screeching! Oh, well, I just released it. Great. Well, I'm about to die. Um... I guess I go back down? Right, there's an eldritch table over there, or another neural apparatus. Doesn't do anything. That doesn't do anything. Eldritch table. Alright, I think we did everything we can here. Let's go out. What made you think I was a thrall? We carry mind flayer parasites. Unless we escape, unless we are cleansed, our bodies and minds will be tainted and twisted. Within days, we will be geek. Mind flayers. Uh, we're turning into mind flayers? There must be something we can do. We can do nothing until we escape. That must be our priority. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. We will address the matter of a cure for this infection once we reach the material plane. Okay, I had more to say, but fine. fight. Combat happens in rounds and each participant gets a turn to act. The game pauses around you during combat so you have time to plan your actions. During your turn, you can move, take an action, and take a bonus action. Uh, show your bonus actions. I'm just completely overwhelmed right now. Like, there's so much on this screen. And I don't know what to do. Let's see. Recharge once per turn. Recharge once per turn. Uh, cantrips. Conjuration. Create an invisible spectral hand that can manipulate and interact with objects.
initiative plus two. Okay, potion of healing, heals and removes burning, pommel strike, second wind, heal yourself, shove, jump, dip. Enhances a weapon. I can't do any of these. Taking position. Not enough resources. Okay. Um. Okay, now I'm on my guy. Uh, Bardic Inspiration, Replenish Resource. Uh, Alright, I need to focus on healing myself first. So let's take a potion of healing. There we go. Then let's use a Bard Power. Nope, I'm out of movements. Hideous Laughter. Speak with animals. Charm a person. Right, is the demon an animal? Probably not. Can traps. Vicious mockery or blade ward. Uh let's do I've got one. Alright, so that did everything and I can do all of these guys. 65% and 88%. Okay. Behold! The fool of fools! Interesting. Alright, well, he's almost dead. Um, Alright, so I've used all my action points, I guess, right here, so I can't use anything else. So let me move... Back. Okay, now I'm on the hand. This is the hand that she summoned. Uh, action. Unarmed strike, throw, or hide. Let's do an unarmed strike. Okay, we killed the imp. And then let's... Uh, we can fly to a target position, shove or dismiss summon. Well, let's get close to this guy. And then shove him. Cool. Okay. Whoa! Jump, um, hide, throw from your inventory, dash. Okay, so these are off a hamstring shot. Reduce their movement speed by 50%. Slash at your target's vital points. Rush attack. All right, looks like I can reach him. Second wind, that's a healing spell. Uh, 
this dips a weapon. I'll tell you what, let's jump back. Oh! Ooh, did that not work? Make way. I'm not sure what happened there. Must be a dippable surface. Okay, um... Okay, so we healed ourselves. I wonder if this is worth the cost. Okay, back to my bar. <clears throat> Wolfie Miwi. Or the Dark Chlorine says collector based vibes from Mass Effect. Yeah, definitely. Wolfie Miwi says the narrator is voiced by Amelia Tyler, who famously also voiced Eva Ritter and Atharu in Amnesia Rebirth, as well as Nerissa and Windarag the Pathfinder games. Cool, thank you for that. <clears throat> okay, how can I help my team? Um. I'll do this. And I'll target her. Or not. Did I waste it? Blaze War, take only half the damage from bludgeoning. Charm person, speak with animals, vicious mockery, healing word, hideous laughter. Um, with haste. He's he's all <coughs> that guy's already threatened. Alright, so we did a hideous laughter on him. And what's this? Perform. Play a tune to attract and delight those around you. What does that do? Shove. Healing word. Bardic inspiration. There we go. Okay, cool. Manage reaction. Reactions respond to events and triggers, even outside of your turn. You can toggle them on or off, and whether they automatically trigger or ask for input. <coughs> Opportunity attack. Okay. All right, let's try perform. Perform. Play a tune to attract and delight those around you. Play an upbeat foot tapper to attract and delight those around you. Rousing battle chant. Crowd pleaser, a mysterious tune, a jaunty sea shanty, or a troubled bard's ballad. Let's try a, a battle chant. All right. <laughs> and now I'll walk away. Perform in old time battles. Okay, we've got the mage hand here. We could throw, uh, shove, or fly. Let's see if we can finish this guy off. Summon, shove. All right, I guess I don't know what to do. So, in turn. Okay, it's this guy's turn now. Ranged attack. Let's try a ranged attack. 85%. Nice. 
Nice. You proved surprisingly adequate in battle. Now, to the helm. Okay. Summons, you've summoned a creature, companions, some allies can join you on your adventure. You can control them the same way as you can character. Wonder if the gods are watching me. Light crossbow. Hand crossbow, three to eight damage, three to 10 damage, so that's better. Scroll of Revify, revive of a companion, keychain, alchemy pouch, amethyst, and gold. All right, anything else I can interact with up here? Okay, we've got an axe. Uh, zero to five damage, that's three to eight damage. Guess I'll put that there. Offhand attack, you will automatically use your bonus action to make an offhand attack while using two weapons. Can I give this to my other companion? Can. All right, so sh her short bow is three to eight damage. It's two to seven damage. That's also two to seven damage. All right, so that's a two-handed weapon, so she can't have that and the hand crossbow. That's four to 13 damage. The ax that I gave to Barty Horn is way worse than that. Three to eight, so her sword is a lot better. We'll keep that on her for now. All right. Without delay. Looted, looted. Empty, empty. Did we loot this guy? No. Light crossbow. All right. Uh, two to seven. That's two to nine. So the crossbow is better. Swift as my feet can carry me. Gold. Another hand axe. Take all. Give up now. And let's give the hand axe to her, Lizelle, so she can have an off handed weapon. Oh, she can't. Equipped with both hands. Okay, so her longsword is a two-handed weapon, so she can't hold this as well. All right, so that's two to seven damage. That's three to ten, zero to five. That's four to nine, so this is better. Okay, on him, it's zero to five. And Mike says you can zoom with your mouse wheel for a closer field of view. All right, thank you. All right, we healed up. It's not over. Ship won't be able to take another dragon attack. We need to get out before it's too late. Ooh. All sorts of stuff. Okay, we got a simple robe. I'm currently wearing a simple jerkin. So the simple robe is worse than my simple jerkin. She's wearing armor, which is way better than what I just got. Short sword, three to eight damage. Scimitar, three to eight damage. Rapier, three to 10 damage. That's better.
Oh, but it's not an off-handed weapon. Not proficient with uh, martial weapons or scimitars. Am I proficient with this? Okay. So we'll put that there, I guess. Another splinter! Isik, back! Touch nothing without knowing its purpose! Okay. Greg says you can hit tab to view your whole party. Oh, thank you, Greg. This is much better. This is gonna make inventory management so much better. All right, so that's three to eight. If I put it over there, that's also three to eight. That's three to 10. So that's better. It's two to nine though. Why is that so much better? I guess just because I'm, I'm specced into it because I have push proficiency with the weapon. Yeah, I guess so. All right, she's wearing a 15 armor. Disadvantage on skill checks. Simple jerkin. 10, 11, 15. That's wonderful. Thank you for that. All right, let's see. What can I interact with? There's a backpack over here. Malachite and gold. What is this? I could attack the Nautiloid tank. Let me out. Mind Flare pod. Sacrificed cultist. Sapped. Damn it! You! Get me out! We have no time for stragglers. Uh, okay, let's see. There's no time I need to get out of here. I'll look around. There must be some way to get this thing open, or we can look for a, a latch that might open the lid. The construction is too alien. Nothing looks familiar. This ship is crashing. Do you intend to die for a stranger? I'll look around. Contraption next to the pod. They did something to it when they sealed me in. Hurry! Please! Okay, this contraption next to the pod. <laughs> Mysterious liquid. Come on! Get me out of this thing! Stay calm, I'll find a way to get this open. Keep looking! Okay, well that was wrong, I guess. The console appears dormant. We could hit it or look for a switch or release. The mechanisms are completely unrecognizable. Sokin must power this thing. Whoa, what just happened? Uh. What just happened? I'm so confused. It got interrupted. I guess I'm being attacked by an intellect devourer. Okay, let's try ranged attack. Hold on, I should do a bardic inspiration first, right? Can't 
target self. Invalid target. Okay, never mind. Let's use range on her. Then let's get as close as we can, I guess. Might both be true. And, <laughs> and it's dazed. Bardic roll? Oh, I must have gotten that from the bard. From my from my bard. Okay, cool. Not enough resources. All right, so let's end turn. Okay, now this guy can uh, main hand attack, piercing strike, two turns. Possibly throw your enemy off balance, deal regular damage, and possibly inflict gaping wounds, which cause extra damage. And that's a ranged attack, a weakening strike, a non-lethal attack. Oh, it lasts two turns. I turned my back to an enemy, I got attacked, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna end the turn. I will ascend. And I'm right next to this guy, so let's see. Uh, let's do Lacerate or Piercing Shot. Let's try Lacerate. <laughs> Save fail. <laughs> Alright, well I did good, uh, despite being a little confused, I, I did good. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, let's go Very back well. to this machine over here. The console appears dormant. Let's look for a switcher release. The mechanisms are completely unrecognizable at first, but then you spy an empty socket. Okay, I need to find a socket, so let's... We need to find something to put into the socket. Um, sacrificed cultist. Let's see what this guy says. Life flickers in his eyes, but he seems totally unaware of his surroundings. Damn it! Elaborate reliquary, burnished necklace, dark mind, or an illithid manuscript. Faint images appear in your mind. A brain, a git Yankee warrior, and centuries of darkness. Need thieves tools to pick a lock. Alright. Brain in a jar. 
All right, I got a brain in a jar. Perhaps I can unlock her with that. All right, so that's my way out. Let's see if we can slot this into the machine. The console appears dormant. The mechanisms are completely unrecognizable at first, but then you spy an empty socket. Okay, well the brain in the jar that I found apparently doesn't go in the socket. Um, before I hit it, I'm gonna walk around again one more time just to make sure I didn't miss something. I mean, there is this console right here. Psionic energy radiates from the prisoners, but they do not react. The machine makes them hostile. Ooh, whoops. All right, middle button turned them alive. Can I push this button? Can I push this one? Oh, no, no, I got to attack him. Great. Uh, <laughs> so, so over here, 75%. Uh. Inspiration. All right, did that give us a buff? I guess that gave us a buff. And now I need to walk away. Let's uh, get out of range. Enter. Oh. Okay, so let's try rush attack. <laughs> Miss! Crap. And that's it. I could try to shove him. But I'm out of resources here. All right, uh... Okay, and then let me move back and end turn. All right, let's try a distance here. We could weakening strike, but that's too far away. damage. Then I healed myself. Okay. And that's it. Let's end turn. Okay. Uh, piercing shot. 49%. So let's try main hand attack. 80%. Okay. We got gold and a bottle. With a mysterious liquid. Bronze necklace. Okay, let's see. Bronze necklace. Nice. Smells of rust. Can I place it? Yeah, okay. A burnished. Let's give her the bronze one. And we'll we'll give me the burnished one. Okay, well, let's see what happens if we push the final button. Nice. 
nothing. All right, let's heal up. Oh. Alt Grendel says, sorry to bother you, Ox. Could you move your thumbnail picture to the top left? We can't see the mini-map. Oh, okay. And then uh, the Astro Nerd Boy says, Ox, your image is blocking the mini-map. Any chance of moving it to the left side of the screen? Okay, well, I did that. Hopefully that'll help. Right, I've interacted with everything that I can here. I think. So the only thing I can do next is try and hit the machine to let her out. I mean, I could try and hit these brain jars, but... All he says is odd. Curious. Examine brain jar. Several brains are trapped in this device, gently kept afloat in cerebro's spinal fluid. I mean, I could attack it. All right, well, let's hit it. The console appears dormant. Hit it! Nothing. The console remains dormant. Ah, uh, what do I put in this? The mechanisms are completely unrecognizable at first, but then you spy an empty socket. Okay, well, what do I put in the socket? I haven't picked up anything except for this dark mind. A humanoid brain alive and in perfect condition, suspended in cerebrospinal fluid. Pod's stuck fast, I can't free you. Wait! That can't be. There has to be another way. Please! It cannot be helped. Come. Well, I'm uh, coming up with a loss here. Wait, there's a brine bulb. Can I attack that? Cat5 says, next room is a key for the chest in this room. Okay. Well, I guess we'll move on to the next room. Cerebral Aquarium. What does this do? Odd things. What are playing there from? We are nearing the helm. Once inside, do as I say. All right, Chad says I'm going into the wrong room. I came from. Oh wait, no it's not. Gold key! Oh! Certain items such as keys, ingredients, and camp supplies are sorted into handy containers in your inventory. Okay, can I use this key? No, I didn't want to go. Alright, let's go try the key. The 
console appears dormant. The mechanisms are completely unrecognizable at first, but then you spy an empty socket. Well, the key doesn't work on that. I am slowly dying here. Damn it. Maybe we can use the key on this chest. Yay! Use the gold key. All right, we've got onyx and gold. Well, let's go back into this room and see if we can find something that we can use to release our friend here. Skra, how many hosts of these gay infected? Mind Flayer Pod. Dazed woman is trapped inside the pod. She doesn't notice you. No, no, no. I hear something. Voices. I hear nothing of the sort. Slave mind. Another brain. Dead thrall. Uh, Eldritch rune. A strange energy buzzes through this alien object. You're sure you've never seen any of the like? Yet part of you recognizes it as a component of some bigger machine. Hey, that must be what we need. This might have one of those controls next to the pod. There it is. Rescue the captive. All right, let's see what's inside the cartilage, cartilaginous chest. And we got killing potions. Okay, so it was the Eldritch Rune. Great. What's this? Oh, should we just place our hand on the console? Sure, might as well. As you place your hand on the pod, you hear something. A presence connected to the pod, commanding the person inside to change. Uh-oh. Oh, it was a bad idea. Whoops. <laughs> oh, no, I shouldn't have put my hand on the pod. That was a bad idea. Crap. Kinchar oh. changed at the pull of a lever. How? If we are not purified, this may be our fate. Okay, so we don't have to fight it. Before it's our turn. Okay, let's go rescue what's her name. I mean, can we release this guy now that we've changed him? Newborn Mind Flayer stares at you, weak and dazed. Okay, well, let's keep that guy in there. Ah! The console appears dormant. Insert the rune into the socket. Console hums to life. But what is its purpose? Will it free the captain or transform her like that other unfortunate? Okay. Well, we can pass an arcana check to take a closer look at the powered up console. Difficulty 10, roll the dice. Ah! Oh, just! Ah. Yes. The pulsing glow and organic lines of the device make it seem more like a beating heart than a machine. This device is different from the one that caused the other captive to transform. Perhaps it will open the nearby pod. Well, let's risk it since the only other option is to leave her there. We'll place our hand on the console. Suddenly, 
Suddenly, you feel a hideous squirming in your head. The parasite. Then discomfort fades, and another sensation washes over you. Connection. Authority. We could pass a Wisdom and an Illithid check, whatever that is. Being implanted with a Mind Flayer Tadpole is a fate worse than death, isn't it? To will the pod to open. Difficulty two, okay. I mean, I, I, I can still lose it, but let's try. Yay, all right, 18. Boom, success. You feel the biomechanical brain of the console process your command and yield to it. A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. Poison on the ground, so I should go heal first. What? She's dead. Whoops. What magic is this? Um, we can drop it or keep it. I think I'll keep it. Just in case. I'd have received a mysterious artifact. A many-sided artifact of blackened iron engraved with pulsating runes. Something stirs within. Okay, she's dead. Oh. oh, look at all that stuff. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Uh, can I resurrect her? Don't I have a spell to like resurrect her or something? Eek of a battle. Guess not. Check the scroll you got from her, okay. Scroll of detect thoughts. Focus your mind to read the thoughts of certain creatures while talking to them. It's a single use. Quill circlet. Armor class 13. Mace, zero to five damage. Uh, that's worse than my rapier. Studded shield. I'm not proficient with shields. Leather boots. Same as what I have. Shadow heart clothes. Well, better than my homely clothes, I guess. Tasteful boots. Camp supply pack, alchemy pouch, keychain. Well, I mean, I feel awful. I, I saved her, but then she got poisoned to death by standing on the poison, and I don't see anything. Scroll of Revify. Okay, revive a companion. Oh, but it's only for companions. Top left item in your bard's inventory. Oh.
Well, I'm about to die myself if I keep standing on that. I don't know how to use it on her. She never joined your party, so I guess... I can't revive her. Alright, well. It's on your bar? It's on my bar, is it? Oh, yeah. I can't use it. Oh well. That's a shame. inspiration okay uh, ranged attack disadvantaged from equipment what does that mean did I equip something that makes it less likely for me to make ranged attacks I'm not proficient with medium armor. Oh. Time to strike. Right. Piercing shot, lacerate. Taste my fury. All right, so this is the song that I cast on her. Not enough, enough movement. Okay. Alright, so we'll end turn. <laughs> taking the disengage action lets you leave an enemy's melee range without taking opportunity attacks. Uh, I'm gonna heal myself. Robert says, why does your bard look like the wolf man? He's an orc. He's just a very fuzzy orc. Von Reck gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Congratulations to Connor, Pavel, Deva, Danilo, and Kimo. Disadvantage from equipment again. Okay, so I'm still wearing something. Oh, it's got to be the shield. Yeah, because I'm not proficient with shields. There you go, the disadvantage went away. 
All right, let me try and do... Um... The creature must have an intelligence of five or more. Well, I don't know what he's got. Um, charm a person. Insult a creature. Okay. Listen! You better break to be the louse! Vicious mockery, okay. <laughs> uh, and that's all of my turns, I guess. Can I? Not enough resources. All right, so I gotta end my turn here. Now, she can do a rush attack. Uh, a ranged attack, a pommel strike. So that's one to four damage, two to nine damage. Forty-two percent disadvantage. Target is too close. Okay, so main hand attack, four to thirteen. There we go. Then let's do a pommel strike. Target cannot be an inanimate enemy. Oh, I killed it! I killed it. Okay. All right, so we've got this guy over here. Not enough movement. Well, I guess let's get close. Closer, not too close. Okay. Ranged attack, 90%. Um, now, let me do Bardic Inspiration. Can I do that to myself? I can't. I can't target myself as a bard. So, never mind that. Possibly throw your target off balance. All right, let's get closer. And that's as far as I can go. I am fury. I am death. Let's see. So, we've got this big guy, Commander Zalk. Let's uh, summon a mage hand, I guess. And let's uh, put it there. Finish, you All right. Now let's get closer so we can do damage in the next turn. On the move. All right, we're out of range for a pommel strike and we don't need to heal. So we're gonna end turn. Okay, um, I've got a 35% chance to get him from there. So let's get closer. Don't waste a step. That is gonna improve my shot chance. Nope, still 35%, because he's got a high defense. And I can't get within melee range of him, so I'm gonna go ahead and do... Could I do a piercing shot? Now well, let's try it. And I missed. Okay, so that ends turn then. Now, rush attack. That's two to nine damage. But it's only a 30% chance. That's a 40% chance, it's better, but still. 
Nice. Your attack was resisted and the entity took half damage. Examine an entity to see its resistances. Okay. Um, resistances to slashing, piercing, bludgeoning, fire, <laughs> lightning, cold, and poison. Um, fiendish blessing. Protected by the blood of the fiendish ancestors, Cam Cambions have a plus two bonus to their armor class. He's currently threatened. All right, so if those are his resistances, what is he weak to? It's not telling me, but essentially every single attack type is, uh, he's resistant to it. Okay. This is the hand. We could throw, shove, or fly. Or attack. All right, end turn, I guess. We must take the transponder. Oh, okay. I'm doing something wrong here. I need to be doing. Um, I need to be going to the transponder. These boots have seen everything. It's clear. Hurry before they strike. And Mike says, "Leave the big guy alone. Go to the panel." Yeah, you're right. Uh, okay. Ninety percent. Okay. Victory awaits. Eighty five percent. Didn't quite kill it. Okay, 90% chance on that guy, and 70% chance on that guy. Let's uh, try and finish this guy off. Nice. And let's move closer. One day I'll catch a break. Swift and lethal. 65% chance. What if I get closer? Make way. Uh, it's still 65. <laughs> Better than nothing. Now for the hand. Mm -hmm. Trying to get him closer. Okay, so this guy's chasing us here. Another step forward.
Help a downed character dash throw. I mean, I want to distract this guy, so I need to stand my ground. Must take a short rest before doing lacerate. Well, that killed him. No time to waste. Alright, I think I should be able to get it now. There's the transponder. The Helm's alien transponder. You've made it in time. That was good, I guess. We did a good thing there by helping the Lovecraftian creature thing. I'm a little confused. Like, is he a bad guy? Are we helping the bad guys? What are we? Well, that was lucky. As you wake, the tadpole squirms in your skull. <laughs> it's so gross. We can check ourselves for injuries or we can orient ourselves. Where did we land? Let's orient ourselves. The chaos of the crash site confuses the landscape. You'll need to find a settlement or landmark, and you'll need to do it quickly. The tadpole is a death sentence, and the clock is ticking. You need a cure. Journal updated. Find a cure. Okay. Well, where's our friend? We lost her. Mangled Fisher. 
Shadow Heart. Dead. Who is Shadow Heart? Okay, well, I am not proficient with shields, and I get a huge penalty in combat when I use them. So, Crude Mace, 0 to 5. My rapier is better. So nothing I looted from the body is very good. Pavel says, Gifts were once slaves to mind flayers, but managed to get free. And now they are, they are sworn enemies. In Planescape Torment, you can learn their history, including split into Gith Yanki and Gith Zeron. Thank you. Shadow Heart. Need to find a way forward. A trap disarm toolkit, rope, and a hammer. An old floppy hat. Oh yeah. Nice, I'm a cowboy. It's a pouch, another potion. All right, there's another mangled, mangled fisherman over there. Murgrass, what's murgrass? Recipe unlocked. Gold. Intellect Devourer. Backpack. Fresh water. There must be a settlement somewhere nearby. Camp supplies. All right, and then shanties for the bad queen. Oh God, here we go. <clears throat> And we row with the spray upon our necks. And we all row with the spray upon our backs. And we all row with the sea beneath our feet. And the jerk queen stays the storm. Wave mother, wave mother, lashes to the prow. Wave mother, wave mother, we ask to sail your skirt if you allow. Wave mother, wave mother, sink us if you will. Wave mother, wave mother, our skulls are yours with brine and sand to fill. All right. Souls away and anchor still. The wind won't move without the jerk queen's will. We'll wait gladly years and days till the jerk queen brings the waves. Hey ho, she told us so. Hey ho, she told us so. Poetry, lovely. Perfumed letter. Okay. Sigh, I love you. There, I said it. And if you meet me tomorrow, I'll say it again and again. And keep on saying it till we're old and gray. So let's do it. Let's go to Baldur's Gate. I know it's risky, but so is staying here. The last few months have been hard, but they're always a little easier when you're there. Leave your boat and meet me at the hill overlooking the old bridge. Bring whatever you can carry. We'll make do without the rest. Don't be late. Love, Anna. Point discovered. You've discovered a waypoint. You'll be able to teleport to this location by selecting it on your map. 
Alchemy. You can craft your own potions. All right. A fish and a bottle. Belladonna. Ancient Sigil Circle. The Astro Nerd Boy says, Shadow Heart is the girl who died on the ship. I think Revify works on her now. Oh, really? Okay. Um, well, let's try it out. Abducted commoner. More of those wretched things. If I can find my way back. Okay, we got a another sword, three to six damage. It's worse than what I've got. Okay, let's see if, see if I can find her body. Okay, let's try Revify. To cure you. Oh, it worked! The artifact. What have you done with it? We could say, none of your concern, it's mine now, or here, take it. Ah, uh, well, it is hers, and I feel bad for killing her, so here, take it. Thank you. Though you shouldn't have had it to begin with. We've got the same problem after all. Let's try to find a solution together, before it's too late. I feel bad for taking all of your clothes. Can I give those back? We could say you're on your own, or all right, fine, let's stay together. Lead the way. Okay, Daughter of Darkness, press J to view. Uh, Daughter of Darkness, continue traveling with Shadowheart. We recruited Shadowheart, a half-elf and fellow Nautiloid escapee. She perished in the crash. However, we resurrected her. I mean, I resurrected her. I don't know where the other person was. Um, where, where is our other friend? She's really not doing well. Can I heal her? Feeling better? Your replenishable resources are dwindling. Take a long rest to restore hit points and other resources. Tell you what, uh, we gotta give this lady some clothes. So let's give her some leather boots. Um, homely clothes. Um, I don't remember what she was wearing. Bandit's armor. I guess. Was that what she was wearing? And then we should probably give her some better gear. Crude mace, quill, let's see, scimitar. That's what I have. I've got a rapier. Okay, what is she proficient with? She's not proficient with a scimitar. Is she? character sheet. Um, she's a cleric. What is she? Alright, so if she's a cleric, she needs a mace. Yeah, all right, she does two to seven damage with that mace. A chain shirt, oh, this is her armor. There you go, 13.
I could wear the bandit's armor. Okay. A circlet. Where does the circlet go? Let's give that to her, I guess. Uh, can she have an offhanded weapon? She can't. Uh, short sword. All right, she does two to seven damage, but she's not proficient with that weapon. So we'll keep that. Simple robe. Can she have a shield? She can. Okay. Plus two to armor class. Looks like she is proficient with that. Uh, that's a studded shield. Is that better? Plus two to armor class. Plus two to armor class. Okay, we saved her life. I'm happy about that. Mangled Fisher. Did we loot that body? Yeah, I think we did. Now, um, we found that note on the body of the guy over here, and he was going to go meet his lover. And I feel so awful that he's dead. So I wonder if we can use our spell to resurrect him. Target must be a playable character. Oh, man. Okay. Let's take a look at the map. Uh, this is the map of your surroundings. You can view quest locations and place custom markers. You can also teleport to waypoints you've discovered. Okay. So, overgrown ruins. This is a crash site. Are we on a ticking clock? Like, do I have to solve this quest? In a timely fashion. All right, is this the fast travel marker I found? It is. Okay, ancient door. It's locked. We get that open easily. Maybe there's another entrance. Well, I also, I've got a. Oh, that's a trap disarm kit. All right. Well. It looks like the only path available to me is back through the crash site. Oop, dead fisher. Oh. ground rules. Positioning is important. Ranged attacks from above, above are more likely back. to hit. One strike could be lethal. Uh, alright. 90% chance. She's a cleric. What does she have? Fire bolt. Hurl a mode of fire. 1 to 10 damage. Concussive smash. 2 to 7 damage. Okay, that's not in range. That's not in range. That is in range. Done. Now, what have I got here? Uh, Shield of Faith. Prote protect a creature from attacks. Increases armor class by two. Nice.
One to four damage. Three to ten. Three to ten. Gaping wounds. So I've got, I've got two piercing strikes. What are the differences between these two? Weakening strike. Non-lethal attack, but it... Uh, this guy's almost dead. Not really. I could do that. Nice. Shared initiative. Party members next to each other in the initiative order can act simultaneously. You can switch between them freely and take their actions in any order. Okay. Um. Never a dull moment. Okay, so let's see. Perhaps our survival isn't such a distant prospect. Take a short rest to recover half of your hit points and some of the resources. Open the rest menu and initiate a short rest. Go to the level up. Wow, a lot has happened here. Level up. Still breathing, despite everything. Bard level two. All right, health increase. Just a lot of just things flying by the screen. Great. Pavel says, I've seen 24 hours of gameplay and no ticking clock. That's great. Mark Van Vrucht became a silver ox. Thank you, Mark. All right, choices pending. Let's see. Uh, Choose the spell you know from the list below. Spells require spell slots to cast, unless a feature states otherwise. Replace spell. Choice is pending. Gain a spell. Replace a spell. Available. Uh, okay. Uh, Thunder Wave. Release a wave of thunderous force that pushes away all creatures and objects. Sleep. Long strider. Increases movement speed. Heroism. Feather fall. Fairy fire. Dissonant whispers. Frighten a creature. Disguise. Bane. Up to three creatures receive a penalty to attack rolls and saving throws. Um, okay, let's try... Uh, Try Thunder Wave. <laughs> Prepare spells. Inflict wounds. Guiding Bolt, Healing Word, Shield of Faith, and Cure Wounds. Well, since I don't understand really what's going on, I'm just gonna accept the default for now. Okay, well, let's loot. Abducted nobleman. You've stepped on a surface that could become dangerous if affected by elements like fire or lightning. Most surfaces like this can be washed away with water. Silver locket, a walnut, a rapier, and gold. I could attack the nautiloid tank, but that's probably a bad idea. Dead Mind Flare, a Spiked Bulb, uh, 
I guess that's a thrown projectile. And a turtle gentleness chest. A toxin. Okay. of speed, a skull, and a void bulb. Alright, I think that's everything in the ruins of the ship. tools. Great. Open locks. I wonder if that means I can go back and, um... Oh, okay. Uh... Thieves' tools. Light of hand. All right, difficulty five. Thieves tools plus one. Dexterity plus two. Jack of all trades plus one. Success. All right. What I get? What I get? Leather helmet. Great. <laughs> Let's see. <clears throat> Dexterity saving throws plus one. All right. Light armor. Oh, man. But I love my cowboy hat. Oh, well. All right. We got some mergrass here. Belladonna over here. Then I guess I'll just follow the path. We couldn't get into that temple because it was locked. Is there anything off the beaten path over here? Face on. Recipe unlocked, Ashes of Basalm. Well, I hear voices. I've got one of those brain things cornered. There, in the grass. You can kill it, can't you? Like you killed the others? All right, three options. Easily you stand back or kill it yourself. You look capable enough or leave. Well, he looks like he's in distress, so we'll say easily stand back. There. Can you see it? Uh -huh. Shh. Not a sound. Not if you want to keep that darling neck of yours. And you. Keep your distance. No need for this to get messy. I need him alive. Stow that blade or I'll show you just how messy things can get. <laughs> promises, promises. But I have other business, I'm afraid. Now, I saw you on the ship, didn't I? 
Nod? We could nod, we could shake our head, or we could melee attack. Headbutt the elf! 14! Strength minus one. Oh, man. Melee weapon proficiency plus two. I'm gonna risk it. No! Oh, yes! No! No! I'm one away! Ah, one away! <coughs> you wriggling little... Your mind twists. You're looking out of unfamiliar eyes, prowling dark, busy streets. You try to hold the memory, but it fades to the worm. The light. The fear. <coughs> what was that? What's going on? Um... We could say it's the Mind Flayer's worm, it connected us, or we could pass a strength check to, sit, to grab his knife arm and twist, or a dexterity check to slip free while he's distracted. We'll pass the dexterity check. Okay, oh, it's only a 10. Nice. Success. I soar into your mind. They took you. Just the same as me. And to think, I was ready to decorate the ground with your innards. <laughs> Apologies. We could say apology accepted. I might have done the same if the roles were reversed. Or glad to see we're all cut up now. Or you'd better have more to offer than apologies. Let's do that, because I don't, I don't like this guy. I'm out of wine and flowers, so I hope an introduction will suffice. My name's Astarian. I was in Baldur's Gate when those beasts snatched me. Interestingly, my companion disapproved of that dialogue choice. Um, I don't know if you saw it, because my screen was covered by my camera. So it looks like she likes it if we try to parlay. All right. <coughs> We could pass a Baldurian check to introduce ourselves and say that we're Baldurian too, or Baldurian too. We could tell him our name and story, or we could nod. Well, if I'm a bard and I'm trying to make friends, we'll try to find some common ground here and introduce ourselves. Is that so? We clearly move in different circles. Oh, do we? So, <laughs> do you know anything about these worms? Um, we could say yes, unfortunately. They'll turn us into mind flayers. I don't, I know we don't want them in our heads, or you know as much as I do. Let's go ahead and tell him what we know. I mean, it doesn't, it's not gonna hurt anything to divulge that. Turn us into... Ha! <laughs> of course it'll turn me into a monster. What else did I expect? Although... It hasn't happened yet. If we can find an expert, someone that can control these things, there might still be time. I mean, you just held a knife up to my neck. I'm kind of holding a grudge right now. Control it, we can say, we need to get rid of it, or you should travel with me, our odds are better together, or I need to get moving, but you can shelter at my camp, or I've wasted enough time here, farewell. Let's first say control it. We need to get rid of it. Well, yes, of course. But first things first. I'm happy to have another companion. You know, I was ready to go this alone. But maybe sticking with the herd isn't such a bad idea. And you seem like a useful person to know. All right. I accept. Lead on. Okay, new companion, party line. Your party is shown on the side of your screen. The portraits show your character's health and conditions. Drag the portraits apart to split the party. You can split the party? Huh. 
All right. Scared boar. All right, which way were we coming from? I think we came from that way, so... No, we came from this way. Well, I'm hoping we can find our other friend. So let's go back into the ruins of the ship. That's back to where we were. Footprints. There may be even more that survived the crash. Dead goblins over What's there. Going on with that room? Worth checking for supplies, maybe. It's unstable somehow. Approach the sigil on the stone. Magic glitters and swirls from it erratically, as if malfunctioning. It looks slightly dangerous. We could touch the sigil or leave. I mean, it looks slightly dangerous, so maybe we need to find something to repair it first. I want to finish exploring this camp somehow, uh, this... Ooh, dead goblins. Goblin bow, supply pack. Goblin scimitar. Hand axe. Okay, so he's a bow guy. Oh, all this crap, let's see. 3 to 8 damage, 3 to 10 damage. Not proficient with this weapon. Goblin bow is worse than my light crossbow. What does he have? He has a short bow. Four to nine, three to eight. I mean, it's not better. Can he use the scimitar? No. He uses a knife. That's a dagger. That's a dagger. She needs a ranged weapon, though. Pavel says that the gift woman is further from the crash site, trapped. I see. There, a mind flayer. And it's hurt. I'd rather it be hurt than me. Do be careful. Alright, let's talk to it. You approached the dying monster. This is the thing that abducted you. You could end its life here and now, if only you didn't feel. Compassion. Compassion. We could give in to the emotion, or we could say, this isn't right. Step away. Or we could say, no, you should be furious, shouldn't you? I should be furious, shouldn't I? Yes, you feel hate. And you deserve to be punished for it. No, I don't. You should be whipped. Made to bow before this creature in shame. What? It's possessing your mind. Forcing you to love it. But then the feeling slips. The creature's mind seems to focus elsewhere. We could pass an intelligence check to concentrate on its thoughts. We need to pass a 10. We've got plus two from intelligence and jack of all trades. Let's do it. Oh, yes!
Success! Your minds fuse, lusting for something that is gone. But then its grip claws back with a vengeance, a vice locking your mind into obedience. It needs sustenance to survive, and with your very body, you can provide. We could submit to the feeling, lean in, as if for a kiss. <laughs> or we could pass a wisdom check, yeah, to say resist the intrusion with everything we have. And it's a five. And we've got a plus one from Jack of All Trades. Can we pass it? Nice. The monster lies exhausted, defeated. Its eyes, wet orange pearls, radiate malice. We could leave it to die slowly, or we could close those eyes forever. Let's just end it and be done with it. Ooh. Okay. Monster. Death is too good for it. On the body, we've got a void bulb and a caustic bulb. Okay, my world is starting to expand here. Um, there's the overgrown ruins. Our companion said we could probably get around behind it. And we see a path over here that seems to go right towards the overgrown ruins. But it's still really early in the game. Do I really want to explore a dungeon right now? Shouldn't I be focusing on healing myself? and finding my other lost companion? I've got five minutes. Let's see what's down this path. And I think we've been here. Yeah, it loops back around. So it looks like we only have one way to go. Over here and to the right. Okay, before we touch that, let's see if we can find something to fix it. There's a path over here. Oh! Broken. Must have been here a while. Torn net trap. Not much use anymore. Smashed cage. Okay, um. Well, curiosity is getting the better of me. I'm gonna go ahead and touch this portal thing. Approach the sigil on the stone. Magic glitters and swirls from it erratically, as if malfunctioning. It looks slightly dangerous. Touch it! Oh. Who could have predicted? <laughs> oh! A hand? Anyone? Okay. We could slap the hand. <laughs> we could say, who are you? Or we could pass a barred charisma check to, a check to attune ourselves to the sigil's magic and then bid it to quiet down. Let's do that. All right, pass a seven check. We've got plus three to charisma and plus one from Jack of all trades. Let's do it. Oh! Continue. Whatever you're doing is working wonders. Now a quick little pull should do the trick. All 
right. We saved a guy, somehow. Oh. Hello. I'm Gale of Waterdeep. Apologies. I'm usually better at this. Our party grows. Is he gonna join us? Um, no need to apologize, we can say. Are you all right? Or at introductions, he's usually better at this. Or at not wasting the time of passing adventurers. I certainly hope so. We're gonna be polite to this guy. We are, after all, a charismatic bard with big, tusky teeth. A bit shocked, but friend, it's a relief and a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Okay, calm down See, a bit. See, but I know you, don't I? In a manner of speaking. You were on the Norseloid as well. Never mind the Nautiloid. How did you get stuck in that stone? Or, you don't trust this man. Draw your weapon. Or we can say I was, yes. Um, I was, but I'm curious about how he got stuck in the stone. I don't know what transpired exactly, but the ship broke into pieces and I suddenly found myself in freefall. As I was plummeting to certain death, I spied a glimmer quite near where I estimated my body to impact with less than savory propulsion. Recognizing this glimmer to be magical in nature, I reached out to it with a weaving of words and found myself on the other side, as it were. How about you? How did you survive the fall? I like this guy, he's funny. And honestly, I don't know. To be honest, I haven't a clue we could say. I took control of the ship, landed it safely, and saved the day. Or I survived, that's all that matters. We'll be honest with this guy and say we don't have a clue. Fair enough. But even so, I have the unfortunate suspicion your survival is still very much in jeopardy. Back on the ship, you too were on the receiving end of a rather unwelcome insertion in the ocular region. Were well, you not? Go on, we could say, or couldn't have phrased it more repellently myself. Or that's hardly any of your business. Let's do number two. No you sugarcoating it, is there? The insertee we speak of, this parasite? Are you aware that after a period of excruciating gestation, it will turn us into mind flayers? It's a process known as ceramorphosis, and let me assure you, it is to be avoided. I believe you. You don't happen to be a cleric by any chance, do you? A doctor? Surgeon? Uncannily adroit with a knitting needle? I mean, we have a cleric in the party. You seem to know enough about our condition to realize it's beyond most cleric's skills. Most, no doubt. But I find myself hoping to be in the presence of the few. You don't happen to be one of them. <clears throat> we could say, I was going to ask you the same question, or can't say that I am, or we can pass a bar check to say, I can tend to basic wounds and ailments, but alien parasites? I'm afraid not. As we've established, few enough can. It's not exactly a common affliction. We're most certainly going to need a healer, and soon, too. How about we lend each other a helping hand once more and look for a healer together? Sounds like a plan. You're welcome to join me. Or we could reject his offer. We'll go ahead and grow our party. Most excellent. A parasite shared is a parasite halved. Or something to that effect. Oh. <laughs> but before you think you're about to embark on a journey with most ill-mannered a man, thank you for pulling me out of that stone. It was an act of foresighted kindness, I assure you. For I have the feeling ample opportunities will present themselves for me to return the favor. See, this guy is polite. I like this guy. The other guy tried to knife me. And this guy, he's nice. All right, well, uh, we got to level up here for Asterion. He is now level two, health increased. Actions, he's a rogue, a high elf rogue. Okay. Can we make any changes? Looks like we can't. So we'll accept it. And then Gale leveled up two. A lot going on here. Class features a uh, slot unlocked. Spell slot. Two, gained two spells. Okay, choice is pending. Two spells. Um, burning hands. Fire damage. Charm a person. 
chromatic orb, hurl a spear that deals thunder damage. Okay. Um, color spray, blind a creature. Disguise self, expeditious retreat, or expeditious retreat. Gain dash immediately and as a bonus action on each of your turns until the spell ends. False life. Um, level one necromancy spell. Hmm. Featherfall, find familiar, summon a familiar, a face spirit that takes an animal form of your choosing. Ice knife, throw a shard of ice. Wow. Enhanced leap, long strider, magic missile. Magic missile. I haven't even played D&D &D and I, I've heard that meme before. Shoot three magical darts, each dealing damage. They always hit their target. Protection from evil and good. Protect an ally against the attacks and powers of aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Ray of sickness, a necromancy spell. Poison an enemy. Shield, when you're about to be hit by an enemy, increase your armor class by five. Or Tasha's hideous laughter. Well, we've already got that on the bard. Well, let's see. Um, let's do burning hands. And then let's do ice knife. And then these are prepared spells. Grease. Cover the ground with grease, slowing creatures within and possibly making them fall prone. Thunder wave. Release a wave of thunderous force that pushes away enemies. Sleep. Witch bolt. Link yourself to a target with a bolt of lightning. Deal an additional 1 to 12 lightning damage each turn by activating it. Okay. And mage armor. Well, um, I don't really know what else to do. So I'll just... Click accept. Well, I'm glad we decided to poke that thing and see what happens. Von Reck gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community, and congratulations to Airship Kitty, Matthew Smith, Hacken and Wacken, Ark Knight, and Def Jamma. That's great. Our party grows. We've got a bard, a rogue, a cleric, and I guess he's a wizard. And we got a new fast travel marker. Roadside cliffs and the overgrown ruins. Well, I need a save. Let's save, new save. Save. And that's it for me. That's four hours of Baldur's Gate on release day. An hour of it was spent downloading and installing the game, but we got three hours into it. I'm slowly becoming more familiar with the rather unique gameplay that we've got here. I've never played a Baldur's Gate game before, and it's been a long time since I've played a, what feels like an old school RPG like this before. So um, this is kind of alien. It's new water for me, and uh, it's making me a little uncomfortable. It's, it's kind of hard for me to navigate everything, but as I play, it's becoming a little bit more intuitive, and I think I'm going to enjoy it as I play more. I think the characters are pretty funny. Uh, the story is a bit bewildering, I have to admit. I, I'm not, not exactly sure what's going on. Even the intro cinematic where you had the Mind Flayer in his ship, I'm still trying to piece together exactly what was happening there. So I, I'm eager to explore the story some more, to unlock more of the plot and understand what's going on a little bit better. I am planning to play this some more. If you like it, let me know in the comments section below. I've got Scotch and Smoke Rings tonight. Uh, that's my weekly show where we have an hour long Q&A and uh, then we play um, a scary game. Today we're playing My Friendly Neighborhood. My Friendly Neighborhood. It's a lot of fun. We played it last week. If you want to get all caught up, watch last, last week's episode because we'll be continuing with that later tonight. I've got to get to work on my lore video. Hope you guys enjoyed the broadcast today. And uh, I'll see you soon with Scotch and Smoke Rings. Bye-bye, everybody.